Are you truly happy with where you are in life? Do you wake up feeling a sense of purpose? Or do you find yourself questioning if there's more to life than this daily routine? What does success mean to you? And have you ever doubted its possibility in your life? Life can be overwhelming, full of unexpected twists and turns, leaving us to wonder if a truly successful life is just a far-fetched dream. It's easy to feel lost, to yearn for a guiding light that can lead us through the darkness and towards a life filled with meaning, happiness and fulfillment. Enter the ancient philosophy of Stoicism, a beacon of wisdom that has guided countless individuals through the ages. This ultimate three-hour Stoicism guide for a successful life is more than just a video. It's your personal roadmap to transforming your perspective on success and finding peace in the chaos of everyday life. With simple, straightforward English, we'll explore how Stoic principles can help you build resilience, cultivate inner peace, and live a life aligned with your true values. It's about embracing the present, learning from the past, and preparing for the future with a calm and composed heart. As you listen to my voice, allow yourself to be moved, to question, and ultimately, to find the answers within that resonate with your soul. This guide is your invitation to a journey of self-discovery where success is redefined and happiness is found in the simplicity of living a life true to yourself. Let's begin this transformative journey together, shall we? Have you ever been bitter, angry, or want to get back at someone who hurt you? Have you ever hoped you could hurt them as much as they hurt you? Have you ever lost time and energy planning how to get back at someone or making up stories about how you would hurt or embarrass them? You are not alone if you said yes to any of these questions. In our lives, everyone has enemies or people they see as enemies. They could be our competitors, harsh reviewers, people who hate us, or even family or friends who have hurt us or lied to us. What if I told you there was a better way to deal with your enemies? Rather than fighting, violence or anger, a way that is based on wisdom, virtue and self-control. A way that makes you a better person and kills your enemies at the same time. Are you someone who doesn't feel bad feelings and gets along with others, nature and yourself? This is the way of Stoicism. Stoicism tells us that the only things we can really control are our own thoughts, feelings and deeds. Everything else is outside of us, doesn't care about us and can change. Because of this, we should focus on the things we can control and be okay with the things we can't change. Stoicism is therefore not an inactive or uncaring attitude, but rather an active and sensible one that allows us to live in accordance with our nature and reason, and that gives us the ability to face any challenge, barrier or hardship with courage, wisdom and dignity. What does Stoicism have to do with getting rid of our enemies without fighting? Based on what the Stoic thinkers said, here are seven ways. Number one, understand that your enemy is not another person, but your master. Once you know how to get past your enemies without fighting, the first thing you need to do is realize that your enemy is a powerful teacher in the school of life. Instead of seeing your enemy as an evil force, see them as someone who pushes you to your limits, shows you your weaknesses, and shines a light on your vices. Your enemy becomes a screen that shows you what you need to work on. The great Roman ruler and Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius once said, the best way to avenge yourself is not to become like the wrongdoer. Aurelius said, what stands in the way of action becomes the way by which action is impeded. This point of view tells you to turn problems into chances and use difficulties as ways to grow as a person and as a moral being. Instead of giving in to bitterness or anger, use the challenges your enemy presents as a chance to develop fortitude, resilience and wisdom. Marcus Aurelius also encourages self-reflection by saying, whenever you are about to find fault with someone, ask yourself the following question, 
What fault of mine most closely resembles the one I am about to criticize? This introspective approach forces you to recognize your flaws before criticizing others, which builds humility and empathy. So, instead of being angry at your enemy or wanting to get back at them, you might want to thank them for the lessons they've taught you, show them kindness, wish them well, and look into the possibility of making peace. Stop seeing your enemy as a threat and start seeing them as a unique gift or blessing that helps you learn more about yourself and grow as a person. By thinking this way, you not only stop your enemy from hurting you, but you also raise yourself to a better level of kindness and understanding. In short, the way to get rid of your enemy without fighting is to use the wisdom you gain from using hardship as a guide on your path to improvement. Number two, understand that your enemy is not what is making you suffer, but your opinion. If you want to break down your enemy's power without getting physical, the second most important thing you need to know is that your enemy is not the cause of your pain. In fact, that power comes from your own decisions. Your enemy doesn't make you angry, sad, or scared. Your emotions are shaped by how you think about their actions, how you respond to them, and how you understand those actions. Then, your enemy is like a mirror that shows you what's going on inside your mind and feelings. These things show you where your opinions are off and where your thoughts are ruled by logic and feeling. In this situation, your enemy acts as a spark, showing you your patterns of false hopes and the strong feelings of connection and dislike you have for outside events. This fundamental insight challenges the idea that outside events have the inherent power to disturb one's peace of mind. Rather, it is the lens through which these events are interpreted that shapes the emotional response. Epictetus, the Stoic philosopher who himself self rose from slavery to become a revered teacher, encapsulated this idea in his Enchiridion. Epictetus said, people are shocked not by things, but by how they think about them. This statement emphasizes the importance of the inner world in the Stoic philosophy, encouraging people to understand that how they see and understand things greatly affects their mental states. You have the power to change how you respond and build emotional resilience by realizing that your enemy is not the only thing making you upset, but rather a trigger for your own decisions. Epictetus also tells people to remember that comments and abuse do not hurt them in and of themselves. It is how people understand and judge these actions that makes them feel insulted. For this to work, people need to stop blaming the outside world and start taking responsibility for how they see things and how they feel about them. Instead of blaming, complaining or being angry at your enemy, you should take the changing journey of self-examination, question your assumptions, look closely at your opinions and try to change your point of view. If you see your enemy as someone who is causing you pain, sadness or fear, you will miss the opportunity to grow in self-awareness wisdom, joy, and courage. This way of thinking sees your adversary as a helpful compass, pointing you in the direction of inner freedom and letting go of things outside of your control. And when you realize that your beliefs control your emotions, you give yourself the power to break free from pain and enjoy the deep freedom that comes with a change in viewpoint. Number three, know them. To stop your enemy without using physical force, the best thing you can do is go deep into the realms of understanding. To do this, you need to understand why they are your enemy, figure out what they want, and figure out how they think. The key is to see them for what they really are, not through the lens of your thoughts or ideas you already have about them. By getting to know your enemy well, you can avoid fights in a smart way. This knowledge lets you guess their next move ahead of time, take advantage of their weaknesses, and avoid fights that aren't necessary. In addition, getting inside their head lets you see how human they are by showing you their flaws, weaknesses, and inner battles. This understanding breaks down the simple idea that they are evil by nature. 
turning them into people who may be mistaken instead of evil, flawed instead of hideous, and basically the same as you, instead of different. Knowing your enemy can help you understand yourself better. It shows you what makes you angry, what hurts your ego, and what goes against your ideals. You can learn more about yourself by looking closely at your responses and reasons for doing things. This process of thinking about yourself gives you the power to learn from your mistakes, improve your character, and help your inner wisdom grow. This approach can be summed up in a few words by the famous Stoic philosopher Seneca. The best way to overcome an enemy is to make him a friend. This saying goes beyond the common idea of using force to defeat an enemy and encourages people to consider the positive effects of making an enemy an ally. A conversion like this isn't just an outside change, it's an inside transformation that needs a deep understanding of both sides' goals and points of view. If you know your enemy well, you know yourself well too. You can see what makes you angry, what makes you feel threatened, and what makes you question your ideals. You can look at your own reasons, deeds, and results. Your mistakes can help you become a better person and gain wisdom. Number to four, they don't matter. The fourth powerful way to end a fight without using physical force is to intentionally not know what the other person is up to. Making the choice to ignore your enemy, whether they are talking, acting, or just being there, means focusing on something else. When you take this method, you treat them as if they are not important or noticeable. Ignoring your enemy is a strong strategy because it takes away the pleasure they get from irritating, hurting, or influencing you. Showing that you don't care about their attempts to bother you sends a strong message that they have no control over your feelings, actions, or health. This not only doesn't give them the response they were hoping for, but it also makes it clear that their efforts are pointless and don't matter. Ignoring your enemy on purpose also gives you the power to turn your attention back to what's important in your life. You can focus your energy on things that make you happy, help you reach your goals, and help you grow as a person by avoiding the things that might distract you. This conscious change lets you get past the bad feelings that come with disagreements and spend your time and energy on things that make your life better. Being in the present moment all the time becomes an important part of this plan. Ignoring your enemy gives you time and space to think about and enjoy the good things in your life, which leads to a grateful attitude. To do this, you need to be able to see the future clearly and without any stress. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic ruler, said, The best revenge is not to be like your enemy. This quote sums up this way of thinking. By encouraging people to resist the urge to act like their enemies, this saying encourages people to break out of the circle of negativity and revenge. You can protect yourself from the damaging effects of anger and show a higher level of resilience and wisdom by choosing to stay out of things and not know what's going on. No. 5. Let them go. Within the deep journey of defeating your enemy without fighting, the fifth transformation strategy includes the powerful force of forgiveness. Letting go of anger, hatred, and any remaining wants for payback are all part of this transcendent act. In order to reach this level of awareness, one must first accept what really happened, then figure out why it happened, and finally let go of old grudges. When you forgive your enemy, you free yourself from the weight of hate, neutralize the poison of anger, and set your spirit free from the chains of sadness. In this process, you can not only heal the scars caused by anger, but you can also find inner peace again, which will help you get your emotional and mental balance back. Forgiving someone also makes it possible for them to make peace, work together, or even become friends with someone they didn't expect to. When you choose to forgive, you start a journey that will give you more power. This act of transformation doesn't show weakness, it shows how strong, kind, and noble you are. 
It shows that you are not a slave to your feelings, but a master of reason who can go beyond the basic urge to get even. Shows that you are not a victim caught by your circumstances, but rather an aware maker of your fate who chooses the path of healing and growth. The great Stoic philosopher Epictetus said, Forgiveness is better than revenge, for forgiveness is the sign of a gentle nature, but revenge is the sign of a savage nature. This wisdom emphasizes the transforming power of forgiveness, highlighting it as a sign of a kind and wise character. Forgiving someone instead of getting even isn't just a matter of strategy. It shows how strong you are inside when you push past your baser feelings and embrace the higher ideals of kindness and understanding. No. 6. Be smarter than them. This is the sixth strategy path, outsmarting your enemy. This is a tricky dance that can help you end a fight without using physical force. To do this, you need to use your smarts, imagination, and strategy knowledge to get through a tough fight and win through cleverness and wit. Being able to outsmart your enemy shows that you have good judgment because it helps you avoid needless risks, get past big problems, and guide toward results that are in line with your goals. This planned method not only keeps you out of trouble, but it also makes you a chess master who can expertly predict moves and counter moves. Also, the element of surprise, confusion, or praise that comes with outsmarting your opponent can earn you respect, admiration, or even a little fear, showing that you are smart when things go wrong. It shows that you are skilled, clever, and excellent, and that you are more than just a tactical winner. It makes you look like a wise person who knows how to navigate the complicated web of conflict. This method shows that you are not just watching, but are actively involved, moving the pieces around in a planned way to get the results you want. Cicero, the famous Stoic lawyer, said, The skill of the wise man is to turn everything that happens to his advantage. This timeless wisdom encourages people to look beyond their current situation and see challenges as opportunities and setbacks as steps toward progress. In essence, outsmarting becomes a demonstration of wisdom turning a dispute to your advantage and showing the resilience of the human spirit. Seventh, love them. Harnessing the changing power of love is the seventh and final step in the deep quest to end conflict without getting physical. Using kindness, compassion and benevolence as tools for change is part of this. People are encouraged to wish their enemies well, do good things for them and help them grow as people. This is a paradigm-shifting method that goes beyond traditional ideas of how to solve conflicts. It is said that loving your enemy is like alchemy. It can turn their anger into understanding, heal their wounds, and even lead them to a way to make things right. At the same time, this act of love turns into a deep journey of self-improvement, self-enlightenment, and self-elevation. You affect the other person and raise yourself to a higher level of awareness and moral fortitude when you choose love over hatred. Love has a powerful power that goes beyond just changing relationships between people. It can turn enemies into friends, rivals into partners, and disagreements into chances to work together. By showing love in a real way, you create an atmosphere where relationships can be fixed friendships can be made, and partnerships can grow. When you choose love over hate, you also support your own humanity, divinity, and natural beauty. Telling people that you are not spreading hate but love is what it means. You show that you are above your baser feelings by doing this. You have a godlike quality that goes beyond strife. It makes it clear that you are not only a part of the problem, but also an important part of the answer. The Stoic philosopher and Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius encapsulated this transformative approach with his timeless wisdom. The best way to avenge yourself is to not be like that. When you love your enemy, you show that you are human, divine, and beautiful. You can prove that you love, not hate, others, 
and are not a beast, but a god. This is how you can show that you are not part of the problem, but part of the answer. Following these seven transforming ways to end hostility without fighting is a key part of the Stoic philosophy. It can help you beat enemies from the outside, but more importantly, it can help you beat enemies inside yourself. If you follow these ways, you will destroy yourself, but not your true self. You will destroy the fake ideas of ego, pride and stupidity that hide your true self. The main idea behind Stoicism is to get rid of the enemy inside you so that the best form of yourself can come out. By choosing to understand, ignore, forgive, outsmart and finally love, you break down the walls that are stopping you from connecting with virtue, wisdom and happiness. As we go through life, we will face obstacles and achieve our goals. Our inner strengths and flaws are always at odds with each other. We all want to live a life of meaning and resilience, but there are habits that prevent us from realizing our full potential. We will look at eight habits that weaken you and learn how to get rid of them by applying the principles of Stoicism to this journey. Stoicism is a Greek philosophy that was started by Zeno of Citium in the early 3rd century BC. It offers timeless wisdom that can help us deal with the challenges of modern life. Stoicism teaches us to focus on what we can change, to develop traits like wisdom, courage and self-discipline, and to handle life's natural obstacles with grace and resilience. As we talk about these eight habits, keep in mind that becoming more self-aware is the first step toward change. Recognizing these habits in ourselves is the first step toward changing them with Stoic principles that will help us live a strong, meaningful and peaceful life. The first bad habit is putting things off. Many of us put things off or procrastinate, which is what Epictetus said. The key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. In the end, it makes us less determined, slows us down and takes away valuable time that we could use for personal growth and important projects. Carpe diem, which means seize the day, has been used for a long time to help people stop putting things off. The idea behind Stoicism is to live in the present and enjoy it to the fullest. On the other hand, putting things off comes from worrying about the future or not wanting to do the thing that needs to be done. We need to be calm and tell ourselves that the only time we really have control over is right now, if we want to break this habit. A Stoic philosopher named Epictetus told us to focus on what we can control and let go of what we can't. People often put things off by thinking too much about what might happen or how hard the job is instead of just doing it. Focusing on the process instead of the result is a Stoic concept that can help us break free from the chains of putting things off. Set small goals that you can reach and keep working towards them. Accept the pain and insecurity of the present moment. It is in these tough times that we grow and gain the strength to take on bigger challenges. Keep in mind that time is limited and every day you wait is a day you'll never get back. Being strong and having mental peace are all things that Stoic ideals can help us achieve. Negative self-talk is habit number two. As Marcus Aurelius said, our life is what our thoughts make it. How we talk to ourselves has a big effect on our confidence, self-esteem and health as a whole. Talking badly to ourselves all the time makes us weaker because it lowers our self-esteem and stops us from reaching our full potential. Stoicism teaches us to control our thinking, replace pessimism with reason, and practice self-compassion. Marcus Aurelius, a famous Roman ruler and Stoic philosopher, said it was important to pay attention to what we say to ourselves. Basically, he thought that the way we think shapes how we see the world, so we should try to keep an upbeat and sensible attitude. It's important to watch our thoughts without judging them when we're having a mental conversation. 
when self-criticism or self-doubt starts to creep in, catch it and fight it with logic. You should ask yourself if these thoughts are based on facts, or are they just a result of fear and nervousness? Stoicism pushes us to exercise self-compassion, treating ourselves with the same kindness and understanding that we would give to a friend in the same situation. Focus on what you can learn from your mistakes and how you can get better instead of berating yourself for what you think are your flaws or mistakes. Instead of talking badly to yourself, try being logical and kind to yourself. This will help you find inner strength and resilience that will allow you to handle life's problems with confidence and style. Avoiding difficulties is the third habit. Be ready for people to think you are stupid and dumb if you want to improve yourself. Staying in your comfort zone and avoiding difficulties is a bad habit that holds you back from growing and reaching your full potential. Not having patience, courage, or the ability to change to new scenarios stops you from growing these traits. According to Stoic thought, we should view pain and problems as chances for self-development. Epictetus thought that meeting difficulties and going beyond our comfort zones were common ways to grow as people and develop self-mastery. People think that facing difficulties instead of avoiding them is important for personal growth and making yourself better. Stoics think that we can become more patient, more moral, and better understand ourselves and the world around us by choosing to go through hard times. People today tend to look for safety and avoid any kind of pain. We usually pick the simplest route because we like ease and quick satisfaction. This might help for a short time, but it can slow our long-term growth and keep us from meeting our full potential. When we avoid obstacles, we miss out on great chances to learn and grow. The Stoics teach us that real strength comes from being able to face problems head-on and wait for them to pass. We gain patience, learn important lessons, and get stronger traits like courage, perseverance, and resilience through these obstacles. We can't grow as people or as thinkers if we always look for safety and avoid difficulties. We stay in the same place and don't reach our full ability. The Stoics gave us the courage to leave our comfort zones and do things that tested our limits. Not only do these things make us more capable, but they also boost our confidence and make us happier. Also, dodging difficulties can make you afraid of failing. We miss chances to learn from our mistakes and get better when we always stay on the safe side and avoid taking risks. Stoic philosophy tells us to accept loss as a normal part of life and use it as a chance to learn. We can gain wisdom from our mistakes and use it to move forward if we approach loss with a calm attitude. It's important to remember that wanting pain doesn't mean on purpose wanting to suffer needlessly. Stoic thought says that we shouldn't hurt ourselves for no reason. Instead, it gives us the courage to approach problems logically and calmly. It's about shifting our viewpoint and realizing that being uncomfortable is a normal part of life that can help us grow and become better versions of ourselves. We gain control of our lives by intentionally seeking obstacles and pain. We learn to depend on our morals and inner power instead of what's going on around us. According to Stoic theory, we should think about the things we can control, like our thoughts, deeds, and how we deal with problems. Our happiness and success depend less on things outside of ourselves. Stoic ideas can have a big effect on our lives if we follow them. We can go through life with calm and a sense of mission, we learn how to handle problems, loss, and things that don't go as planned. We learn to see difficulties as chances for development and self-improvement, rather than as a threat to be overcome. To stay strong and see it through, we need to keep an open mind about this subject and be ready to question our present views and habits. We can build a strong, flexible mind that is focused on personal growth, by being aware of our tendency to avoid pain and following the stoic advice to face problems head-on. 
So, welcome pain and difficulties and begin the process of learning about yourself and getting better. Indulging in excessive wealth is habit number four. The fourth bad habit is that stoic thought has too much to do with capitalism. It stresses how important it is to value morals and inner ideals more than material things. We can forget what's important though and never be fully happy when wealth takes over our lives. These days, when material things are very important, it's easy to get caught up in the chase for money. Many times we believe that having a lot of stuff will make us happy and satisfied. According to Stoic thought, things that are out of our control will eventually pass away. They could get lost, stolen or destroyed. When we count on them for happiness, we put ourselves in a dangerous position of being constantly let down and unhappy. Putting money on the same level as happiness and self-worth makes people always want more. Getting rich can become a passion, and people will never stop looking for the next big chance or the newest technology. Since there's always something new to want, or someone better off than us, this never-ending want could make us unhappy forever. The famous Stoic philosopher Seneca stressed how important it is to tell the difference between needs and wants. People who are always wanting more and the false belief that owning things will make them happy lead to overindulging in material things. The Stoic school of thought tells us to rethink our wants and put those that are in line with our goals and well-being first. Start by learning to be happy with what you already have to break the habit of wanting too much stuff. Understand that chasing after worldly things can often lead to a circle of need and misery. Focus on developing ideals like kindness, bravery and wisdom instead. These are the real places where you can be happy. The Stoic school of thought urges us to prioritize developing our inner ideals over accumulating external possessions. Justice, courage, wisdom and calmness are all traits that we can control and that can lead to long-lasting happiness. If we value these traits and work to improve them, we might find a deep sense of purpose and satisfaction in our lives. Also, being too focused on material things could make you feel uneasy and unsafe. We might always be afraid of losing what we have or compare ourselves to someone who seems to have more. This bond keeps us from living in peace and quiet by making us feel jealous and afraid all the time. Detachment is something that Stoic philosophy tells us to do in order to break this habit. We shouldn't think that this means we should give up everything we own. Instead, we should try to get along well with them. Understand that things are not what make us happy or make us feel good about ourselves. They are tools that can be used to make our lives and the lives of others better. One way to help create separation is to practice thankfulness which means focusing on what's important and being thankful for what we have. Being happy and relying less on material things is something we can control. We can also accept simplicity and make our lives simpler by letting go of useless distractions if we can break free from consumerism. We can act in a way that fits with conservative ideas we can focus on developing good qualities, building strong partnerships with others and doing good things for society. We can live a calm life and be truly happy after making this mental change. To sum up, having too many material ties makes it harder to follow the stoic mindset. It takes our attention away from our own beliefs and the search for long-term happiness. We can break out of the circle of want and find happiness by becoming more values and living a quiet life. Realizing that things in the outside world are temporary and practicing distance can help us live more socially satisfying lives. Getting approval from others is habit number five. To look for approval from other people is a bad habit that can hurt your stoic philosophy practice. The Stoic school of thought says that making other people like you is less important than focusing on your own ideals. If you count too much on outside approval, 
you might lose your freedom and start to rely on other people's views. It's normal to want to be accepted by others these days, since social media sites are becoming more ubiquitous. Getting a lot of likes, comments and friends can make or break our happiness and sense of self-worth. Dependence on other people's opinions and support can make your sense of self-worth weak because you will always want to be accepted. Stoicism, on the other hand, reminds us that real happiness and satisfaction come from within. Socratic thinkers stress how important it is to develop traits like wisdom, courage, fairness and self-control. These traits don't depend on what other people think or accept. Instead, they are traits that we can grow and improve on our own, regardless of what is going on around us. When we always want other people to like us, we weaken our power. We become more open to new ideas and start to put our sense of self-worth on how well they fit in with others. This could lead to a never-ending search for approval from other people, which makes it hard to find peace and happiness inside. Think of a case that will help you understand this method. For example, let's say you worked hard on your blog post and are proud of it. Instead of recognizing how much your work is worth and how fulfilling it is, you immediately look for approval by counting how many views, likes and comments you get. If you don't get the comments you were looking for, you may start to doubt the quality of your work. Depending on other people's approval lowers your self-worth and the value of the things you do. So, how can we break out of this routine and make our practice of stoicism stronger? First, it's important to know that trying to get approval from other people is temporary and often out of our control. Trying to change people's minds is always a task because views change over time. Instead, focus on developing good qualities within yourself and acting in a way that fits with stoic principles. Learn to accept and understand yourself. Know how you feel and what you think when you're trying to get support. Think about whether it really fits with your goals and values and ask yourself why you need other people to accept you. Remember that what other people think of you doesn't determine your worth, your deeds and character do. Thinking about your actions through the lens of stoic ideas can help you feel more confident in your ability to judge and make decisions for yourself. You could work on accepting yourself. Do not focus too much on how you compare to other people. Instead, focus on how you can improve yourself. Know that your joy and happiness come from inside you, not from outside sources. Instead of hanging out with people who are always negative or make you feel bad about yourself, find people who care about your growth and want to see it happen. Ask people who care about you and who you can trust for advice. Remember, though, that their thoughts shouldn't shape your work. In conclusion, the habit of always wanting approval from others hurts the practice of Stoicism because it doesn't recognize that it's useless to use other people's opinions to judge oneself. Focusing on developing morals and finding inner peace could be a good idea. Learn more about yourself and find people who can help you. The Stoic way of thinking can help you live a better, more responsible life. Inability to deal with unpleasant feelings is habit number six. Stoics believe that reason is important and that we need to be able to control our feelings. We can't stay calm and behave properly though when we give in to bad emotions like anger, jealousy or worry. This is something we should look into more in depth and find out how giving in to bad feelings impacts our silent practice and our overall health. Negative emotions make it hard to think clearly and make decisions. We often react quickly and say or do things we wish we hadn't. When envy turns to anger, it can make us feel spiteful and sour, which can hurt our relationships and stop us from moving, making it impossible for us to take risks or deal with problems. Not only do these feelings make it hard for us to make good decisions, but they also stop us from becoming more self-controlled, kind and patient. 
Stoic philosophy says that emotions are just feelings that come from how we see the world around us. The Stoics believe that we are in charge of how we think and feel. Mindfulness and self-awareness techniques help us question our thoughts and judgments, deal with thoughts that make us feel bad, and train ourselves to think in ways that are logical and moral. Apathy is one of the main ideas behind Stoic thought. Complete emotional separation is an idea that is often misunderstood. Instead of refusing or ignoring feelings, it's about developing emotional resilience and maintaining inner peace in the face of hardship. Stoics believe that bad feelings are normal and will happen to everyone, but they tell us to deal with them in a calm and sensible way. So, how can we get better at being patient and stop giving in to our bad feelings? These are some strategies, but one is to practice awareness, which helps us pay more attention to our thoughts as they arise. Mindfulness helps us be aware of our thoughts and feelings without letting them take over our lives. We can choose a more thoughtful response instead of acting on emotion when we are aware of all of these things. Have doubts about what you think. Check out the deeper thoughts that are bringing up negative feelings when they do. Do you come to your opinions after a fair look at the facts, or are they affected by bias or false beliefs? Restructuring and questioning these assessments can help you change your point of view and make bad feelings less intense. Make it a habit to think about yourself. Have a look at your thoughts, actions, and the outcomes of them. Figure out what other options you have besides the ones that keep coming up. By thinking about yourself, you can find ways to get better and come up with useful ways to deal with your feelings. Pick honor over getting even. When you're feeling mean or angry, tell yourself of the stoic ideal of putting righteous behavior above getting even or making people dislike each other. When you act out of anger, think about how it will affect you in the long run and try to react in a way that is accepting, caring, and kind. Enjoy the peace. The Stoic school of thought gives us the courage to focus on the things we can change and accept the things we cannot change. Take a deep breath and remind yourself that things will happen and that other people can't change them. Letting go of the need to control everything and lessen the effects of bad feelings can help you find peace. When we use these techniques on a daily basis, they help us become more calm and less likely to give in to our bad feelings. It's important to remember that this process takes time and effort. We might make mistakes along the way, but every failure is an opportunity to learn and grow. As you work toward a more moral and satisfying life, embrace the stoic ideals of self-awareness and perseverance. In conclusion, when we let our bad feelings control our actions, the practice of Stoicism is weakened. We should instead hone our awareness, think about the things we judge, do self-reflection, pick goodness over anger, and accept peace. We can eventually feel less negative feelings. When we do this, our lives become more morally right and fulfilling as they become more in tune with Stoicism, logic, resilience, and inner peace. The seventh habit is to focus on past transgressions. Your ability to follow the Stoic theory might be hurt by your tendency to think too much about mistakes you've made in the past. Stoic thought urges us to accept what has happened, accept ourselves, and draw lessons from it, rather than dwelling on our shortcomings. However, many of us get stuck in a loop of regret, sorrow, and self-blame that stops us from moving on and becoming better people. Think about making the same mistakes over and over in our minds. This makes us feel bad and stuck. This habit keeps us from making positive changes and enjoying the present moment fully. Realizing that we can't change the past is one of the main ideas of Stoic thought. Worrying about the past makes it harder to find peace and happiness. It's strange that what really scares and upsets us is not the events themselves, but how we think about them. As the wise thinker Epicurus once said, 
What truly frightens us is not external events themselves, but the way in which we think about them. It's in our power to control our thoughts, and in so doing, we shape our reality. It's important to think about our thoughts and feelings carefully, as this quote shows. We can't change the past, but we can change how we think about and react to it. We can turn our mistakes into chances to learn and grow by changing how we think about them and how we react to them. If we don't want to keep thinking about our mistakes, how can we train our minds to be more calm? Here are some ideas to help you begin. Take in the power of now. Know that the present is the only moment we have real control over. Don't think about the past too much. Instead, concentrate on the present. Do things that help you reach your goals and are in line with your morals. Learn to be kind to yourself. Remember that everyone makes mistakes and be kind and understanding to yourself. Don't berate yourself for mistakes you've already made. Instead, learn from them and promise to do better next time. Remember that being kind to yourself is not the same as letting bad behavior slide. It means recognizing that you are human and trying to be your best self. Practice being mindful. When you do mindfulness activities like meditation or deep breathing, you can become more aware of your thoughts and feelings without judging them. By paying attention to your ideas as they come up, you can learn more about how you think and break out of bad thought loops. Pay attention to the things you can control. Stoicism tells us to control the things we can and let go of the things we can't. Though we can't change the past, we can decide how to deal with it now. We can develop a sense of strength and resilience by focusing on the things we can control, such as our thoughts, attitudes and actions. From your past mistakes, seek wisdom. Instead of focusing on mistakes you've already made, Use them to learn and grow. Ask yourself what you can learn from the event and how you can use what you've learned to make your life better going forward. You can turn past mistakes into chances to grow as a person by seeing them as lessons to be learned. Finally, thinking about mistakes we've made in the past makes it harder to follow the Stoic philosophy because it keeps us stuck in negative thought loops and stops us from fully enjoying the present. As Stoics teach us, we can break this habit and live more satisfying lives by practicing awareness, self-compassion, and focusing on what we can control. Fear of failing is habit number eight. A common habit that makes it harder to follow Stoic thought is being afraid of failing. We can't take chances, go after our goals, or live our lives honestly because of it. Stoicism instructs us to accept loss as a normal part of life and to see it as a chance for development and education. People often fear failing because they don't want to deal with pain or doubt. We worry about what other people will think if we don't reach our goals or we don't believe we can get back on track after a failure. Fear can stop us in our tracks and keep us from taking the steps we need to reach our goals. The Stoic theory has a different way of looking at loss. Stoics don't see loss as something to avoid at all costs. Instead, they see it as a good way to learn. Marcus Aurelius, a famous Roman ruler and Stoic philosopher said, what stood in the way of action becomes the way. This quote sums up the Stoic idea that problems and setbacks are not barriers to growth and improvement, but rather chances to do so. Consider the following ways to get over your fear of failing and adopt a patient attitude. Think of loss as feedback. Failure is not a sign of how good or bad you are. Instead, see it as useful information that can help you learn and improve. Every failure gives you a chance to improve your strategy and get closer to your goal. Pay attention to the things you can control. Stoicism tells us to control the things we can and let go of the things we can't. Things don't always turn out the way we want them to, but we can control how hard we try, how we feel, and how we react when we fail. Build up your resilience. 
Being resilient means being able to get back up after a failure or problem. Develop resilience by having a growth attitude, being kind to yourself, and asking for help when you need it. Risk in a smart way. There's nothing wrong with being afraid of failing, but that shouldn't stop you from going after your goals. Do things that are outside of your comfort zone and take measured chances. Remember that failure is not the end, but a step towards success. Accept the process. Don't focus on the end result. Instead, think about how you can grow and improve yourself. Enjoy the process of working toward your goals and be proud of your success as you go. You can get over your fear of failing and keep going after your goals with confidence and resilience if you accept that failure is a normal part of life and adopt a tough outlook. Don't forget that failing is not the end, but a great chance to learn and grow. Marcus Aurelius said, the obstacle is the way. Have you ever been betrayed and felt instantly hurt, like a glass breaking at your feet? That quick realization that someone you trusted let you down isn't just a feeling that goes away. It's a lesson in being smart and a call to learn how trust works. Trust is essential. In every connection, it's the unseen thread that ties us together. It doesn't matter if you're talking to a friend, working with a group, or even just smiling at someone in the grocery store. Trust is always at play. I'm going to tell you a very important truth today. It's about figuring out the complicated patterns of this web, getting to know people, and figuring out who you can trust and value. This journey is about arming yourself with wisdom and protecting your well-being in a world where your peace should be holy, not about casting judgment shadows. Now it's time to get through the complicated world of people. Here are nine types of people who might seem trustworthy, but could be holding you back on your way to success. It's not about building walls or living in fear. It's about being smart, aware, and caring about your peace of mind. Stoicism shows us how important it is to understand other people's thoughts and actions so that we can choose wisely who to let into our lives. As we go through these types, which are based on Stoic ideas, you'll see that it's not enough to just avoid the bad. You also need to embrace the good and make decisions that are in line with living a respectable and honest life. Let's get started and learn how to deal with the complicated world of trust like a Stoic in the 21st century. 1. The manipulative person. Trust is comparable to giving someone a pen to draw your picture. If it's in the wrong hands, you might not even know yourself. Other than that, it's a work of art. Now, let's talk about the manipulative person who is one of the nine people you really shouldn't give even a color to when it comes to your life. These sneaky people are pros at drawing lies that make it look like they're on your side when they're really just planning their own plans. Remember that faith goes both ways, but people who try to trick you treat it like a one-way street. Their trick is to confuse you with one hand while the other picks your pocket. It's tricky because they often act nice and accepting, but don't fall for it. A trickster changes facts, stories, and even feelings to gain control, just like a chameleon changes colors to fit its surroundings. There's a bit of a detective work involved in keeping yourself safe from this sneaky dodger. Inconsistencies, half-truths, and that feeling that something is wrong should be on your mind. It's not about being scared. It's about being smart and aware. If you catch them in the act, it's time for them to leave your life. Hippocrates, a wise Stoic philosopher, said, We have two ears and one mouth, so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Pay close attention to what isn't being said, to the breaks between words and promises. The truth is often hidden in what isn't said. So, give yourself the cover of knowledge and the sword of wisdom. Finally, taking care of your mental health isn't just a goal, it's a must. And leaving someone who breaks your trust is sometimes the hardest and smartest thing you can do. 
Remember that you are the artist of your own life. Don't let someone who wants to control you use the brush. 2. The always negative person. When it comes to making links with other people, trust is more important than gold. Think about the person who is always critical and full of opinions. This person throws off the balance like a bug in your favorite game. Trusting them is like giving your secrets to a ship that is leaky. The critic's words, which are often tougher than needed, show how insecure they are, not how valuable you are. Their complaints, which never seem to end, are like rain on a parade. They bring down emotions and trust. Let's add some humor to the mix, shall we? People who are always critical are like self-appointed judges in life, where everyone is guilty until proven free. They swing their judgment gavel around with all the energy of a cook who adds too much salt to a stew. It would be pointless to trust them, just as you wouldn't expect a cat to avoid a light pointer. No matter how funny it is, the Stoics were right. Marcus Aurelius said, the best revenge is to be unlike the person who wronged you. So remember that when someone is always criticizing you, their words don't really show how valuable you are. Getting away from these kinds of people is like picking a calm road over a rough one. You don't have to prove them wrong. You just have to keep your peace and not let their noise bother you. They shouldn't be criticizing you all the time. It should just be background noise. Trust yourself and be smart about how much faith you have because your journey, not theirs, is what makes you who you are. 3. The friendly on the surface. People who seem nice on the outside are the ever-smiling charmers who move through groups with such ease that it defies gravity. They are the social birds of our time because their happiness is contagious and they always ask, how are you? But let's take a moment to think, because not everything that shines is gold. Even though these social masters are making the town red with their friendship, they might just be con artists. Their smiles that were as big as the sky might just be covers for a desire to be famous. They change colors like chameleons do, so they can fit in with any group. But remember that a real friend is someone who is there for you when everyone else is gone not just a passing cloud in your life. Seneca said, true friendship is always serene. In this dance of social niceties, the people who move in the beat of real connection are not the ones who are just friendly on the surface. They may remember your birthday, but will they be there when the cake falls? As quickly as truth hits them, their bond could be gone like a thin veil of mist. So as you go through the many ties in your life, equip yourself with insight. Don't be fooled by the pretty face. Look for people who value depth over width, because in the big weave of life, it's the stitches of real ties that hold it all together, not the threads of passing friends. 4. The listener who isn't paying attention. Now, let's talk about a figure that we see every day, like a smartphone. These are the people who nod along with glazed eyes while you talk, possibly thinking about what they're going to eat instead of paying attention. It's not very nice to talk to a wall, is it? The modern statue of an inattentive listener may make you angry, but remember what Seneca said, to be everywhere is to be nowhere. In a world full of messages and digital distractions, the statue of an inattentive listener reminds us how important it is to listen. So let's say you're telling a personal story and someone is looking through their phone like it's the newest bestseller. If you play tennis against a screen, there is no rally and no game. It's not just about respect, it's also about getting along. If they can't take their eyes off their screen for a moment to talk to you, why should you waste your time and words? People should not have to deal with background noise while they watch TV or movies. The next time you talk to someone who isn't paying attention, don't just stand there feeling like you're not important. Remember what the Stoics said, value your own time and words enough to leave. Marcus Aurelius said it well. It's not that we don't have time, but that we waste a good deal of it. 
Don't let the person who isn't paying attention waste your time on something that you'll forget. 5. The person who doesn't feel empathy. As we go through life's complicated web, we often come across people who have lost their emotional sense. Someone who thinks it's as easy to lie to get something quickly as it is for the rest of us to breathe. Isn't that a scary thought? These are the people who walk through life's puddles without caring who gets wet. Their ability to understand how other people feel is permanently off. This lack of humanity doesn't just send up a warning sign, it raises a whole flag. Trust is a delicate bird, and in the hands of those who lack humanity, it's like a weak egg that's always at risk of breaking. A wise Stoic once said, what doesn't help the hive doesn't help the bee. This quote sums up our journey with people who have trouble understanding kindness. They work alone and fly around without caring about the hive. When people do things just to get something for themselves, they often leave a trail of sadness. Trusting these kinds of people is like showing them where we are weak, which is a very risky thing to do. As modern Stoics, it's up to us to notice these traits and keep a healthy distance. We not only keep ourselves safe, but we also show others how to live in a thoughtful and aware way. Remember that it's not enough to just stay safe. You need to build a community where trust and kindness are not rare. Sixth, the always upsetting person. A certain kind of person you might meet is the constant irritant. Think of someone who loves to stir things up and will never miss a chance to poke or prod you. They're great at sneaking jabs, like emotional ninjas who throw little darts that might not hurt one at a time, but do add up over time. That person is always right, never in question, and always ready with a smile or statement that makes you mad. They seem to have a PhD in making people angry. The really cool thing is that they do it so easily that you might not even believe it's real. Do not fall for it. This is their field and game. They move around and talk about their worries and anger. Also, guess what? You don't need to play. Marcus Aurelius said, you have power over your mind, not over outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Say this to yourself over and over again when dealing with someone who is always annoying you. People may try to make you angry, but remember that your mind is yours. Be very careful with it. Their tricks won't work on you. Don't push back when they do. Move out of the way and let their words drift by like clouds in the wind. There's no shaking in your heart. You're the calm in the storm. That, my friend, is real power. When they say something sneaky to you again, just smile, nod, and move on. You are playing a different game, one of power, peace, and wisdom. 7. The Always Victim Watch out for the trap of the endless victim, a character in life's big play who seems to always be caught in the grip of bad luck. This person's story is a never-ending stream of problems. Every day brings a new set of them. They show off their pain like a badge, but for some reason they can't do anything about it. Complaining becomes their comfort zone. Anyone who hears them will hear a strange melody of groans and gripes. But here's the catch. Their problems are frequently self-made. They sail into storms they make, like a master who doesn't pay attention to the direction and then wonder why the seas are never quiet. Marcus Aurelius said, our life is what our thoughts make it. This is especially true for those who feel like they are always being victimized. Their story is a self-fulfilling promise because it is full of negativity and inaction. It might seem kind to offer your help, but be careful. Spend too much time with them and their troubles could pull you down. Empathy and self-preservation are like two delicate dancers. Remember to keep your feet firmly on the ground when you come across this archetype. You are in charge of your own trip, and even though life's waves are rough, your ship doesn't have to follow someone else's wrong path. Eighth, the two-faced person. Now we'll talk about the eighth figure on our journey, the chameleon that dresses like a person, the master of masks. 
the person with two faces. They'll charm you with a beautiful smile and sweet words, but as soon as you turn your back, they'll smear your name in mud. You'll find them spreading stories about everyone they can hear, not just you. Their skill is going from a warm laugh to a cold stab of betrayal without a hitch. It's like seeing a great actress, but your life is the stage and the action is real. When dealing with someone who has two sides, Seneca said, associate with those who will make a better man of you. Choose to surround yourself with people who make you feel good instead of getting caught in their web of lies. Don't keep in touch with people who are bad for you or who lie to you. It's not about being mean, it's about being smart. You're not only taking care of your mental health, but also your image. Remember that an honest enemy is less dangerous than a friend who breaks your trust. Every effective connection is built on trust, and when it's missing, there's only uncertainty. Be strong, make the hard choice, and move away. This isn't just pulling away, it's taking steps toward a life full of truth and real relationships. 9. The Toxic Person Trust is a valuable thing that shouldn't be given away like free samples at the store. And when you're around a dangerous person, trust is something they can't afford. This person is like a rain cloud on a sunny day because they are always there in the background of relationships. They are good at turning happy smiles into frowns, which often leaves a trail of doubt and fear. Picture this. You're making a mound of self-esteem when the toxic person shows up with their negative foot and is ready to knock it down. Trust them. That's the same as making their foot bigger. Let's hear from someone who is calm. You can't control the waves in a wild sea, but you can learn to surf, as Seneca once said. Keep in mind that this person may be going through their own mental storms. When you touch them, it's best to use a spoon with a long handle get close enough to give a cover without getting wet. In the end, what matters is that you keep your own boat steady. Trusting other people can be helpful, but it should be done carefully, especially when working with a bad person. Trust isn't something that works for everyone. It has to be shaped to fit the person and the situation. You wouldn't just give anyone the key to your house, would you? You would only give it to someone who has shown they will be respectful of your space and not make your living room a circus. In the same way, you should only believe people if they have shown respect, honesty, and a good impact on your life in the past. This is about discovering the ideal level of doubt and trust. To sum up, try to be smart about who you trust, especially when the harmful person is involved. It's not just a feeling to believe in yourself, it's a skill and a way of thinking about life. How confident you are in yourself will have a significant impact on how much you accomplish. If you don't believe in yourself, your goals and dreams can be taken away. Think about how often fear and doubt stop people with natural talent who are ready to do great things. We need to look for ways to improve ourselves. First, Let's talk about what it means to have confidence in yourself. It doesn't just happen. You have to get to know and accept yourself first. In Stoic thought, self-confidence comes from being aware of our good and bad traits and making the most of them. People have been telling us for a long time that real confidence comes from within, not from other people liking or praising us. Epictetus, a well-known Stoic philosopher, advised us to focus on what we can change rather than worrying about things outside of our control. We are stronger and better able to handle hard times when we think this way. Being honest is another important part of having self-confidence. Being honest about who you are, what you stand for and what you want is important. Living by your own rules instead of what other people think of you gives you a strong sense of inner peace and stability, which is important for having real confidence. To feel more confident, it's also helpful to think about and judge ourselves. When we look at ourselves, we can see what we need to work on and what we're proud of. We learn and grow all the time, which helps us know what we can do and get past our fears. 
A big part of having self-confidence is being strong when we mess up or fail. Stoicism says that we should see problems as chances to learn and get better. Instead of being afraid of our mistakes, we should accept them and learn from them. This makes us stronger and better prepared for what comes next. Last but not least, doing things boosts self-confidence. The Stoics said that it's not enough to think about ideas, you have to act on them. Try to live by these ideas every day by meeting your fears, being strong and sticking to what you believe in. You'll gain real confidence that lasts. First, get to know yourself. Learn more about what it means to be aware of yourself. As your confidence grows, serious self-examination isn't just about judging yourself. It's about getting to the heart of who you are. Who you are is more important than what you can do. A famous Stoic thinker named Epictetus says we should really look at ourselves and figure out what our fears and reasons are. Being able to honestly and deeply understand yourself is the key to having real self-confidence. Think about how important it is to know yourself well. It's not enough to know your skills and flaws. You also need to understand how they fit with the things you stand for. Stoicism is based on the idea that you can only truly understand yourself when you look at how your thoughts, feelings and deeds fit together. Your confidence is really high because of this game. What does this have to do with our everyday lives? Start by thinking about what you do first when things get tough. Think about whether I'm acting quickly or because it's what I really believe. You build your self-confidence when you act in ways that aren't scared or meant to show off, but because you know yourself and are being honest. Think before you act every day. Take a moment to ask yourself, is this really who I am and what I believe? You are being true to yourself and building your confidence every time you make a choice after giving it some thought. To become more confident, remember that the first step is to understand yourself. Being honest with yourself is the most important thing. It takes time and patience. You'll have to face some hard facts along the way, but you'll also learn new strengths and skills. You need to know that it's okay to not know everything and to feel weak sometimes as you learn about yourself. It's important for your growth as a person to be okay with not knowing everything and to know your boundaries. You are free to try new things when you accept yourself in this way. These new experiences can change how you see the world and yourself. Knowing how strong your thoughts and views are is another important part of getting to know yourself. What you think about yourself and your skills, how you talk to yourself, and how you understand things that happen all have a big impact on your confidence. You can change how you think about yourself by talking to yourself more positively and asking yourself why you have worries about yourself. Being self-aware also means being aware of and accepting of your emotions. What makes you feel good and what scares you can tell you a lot. Listen to your emotions and try to figure out why you have them. This will help you figure out what drives you and what you really want. Being honest, staying true to your ideals and always being yourself come from knowing yourself. Sometimes this is hard, especially when other people want you to act a certain way. You feel more confident and make better, more honest relationships with other people when you stay true to yourself. To sum up, the best way to build confidence is to know yourself well. You not only understand who you are better as you learn more about yourself, but you also see the world in a new way and get along better with others. There are many steps in this process that will help you improve yourself. You should also know that some things can't be changed. One important idea in Stoicism is to think about what you can and cannot control. Truly having confidence that lasts is based on getting this right. It's not about giving up. It's about being okay with how things are. A famous Stoic thinker named Epictetus says that how we react to things is more important than what happens to us. 
It takes courage to accept what you can't do. Things like what other people do and what has already happened are out of your control. Accepting these limits gives you more energy and focus to work on the things you can change, like the things you do, say, and decide. First, look at what you do every day to build your inner power through acceptance. Pay attention to the times you feel helpless and angry. You should ask yourself if you are trying to control something that you can't. Your inner will gets stronger when you think about things you can change. You become stronger, more flexible, and more confident as a result. Finally, having real self-confidence means being aware of what you can and cannot control. You become stronger and more flexible when you accept the things you can't change and work on the things you can. You also become calm, which shows that you have real confidence. Okay with what you can't change. That's the second thing Epictetus said. Change what you can. You can feel more calm inside when you think this way. You feel calmer when you accept the things you can't change and stop worrying about having to control everything. Being calm makes you think more about what you do and how you can make it better. It helps you deal with tough situations better. Not doing anything isn't really what it means to accept something. It means realizing that we can't change some things. We think about what we can do and what we're good at more now. We feel more in control and independent when we adopt this mentality. We can't always control what happens in life, but we can always choose how to respond. This could mean letting go of anger from the past or worries about what's to come in real life. We can't change the past or know what will happen in the future, but what we do today can make our lives better. To build confidence, it's also important to be kind to yourself, especially when things go wrong. You can think clearly and keep going with purpose if you know that everyone makes mistakes, and that's how we learn. Accepting things helps you live a more honest life in the end. You'll have more energy to live by your beliefs and do what you love when you stop trying to control things you can't change. Being honest and having a clear goal makes life more interesting and satisfying, and confidence grows on its own. It's good to be okay with things you can't change and work on things you can. This will help you feel more confident. Keep this in mind. You can't control everything, but you can control how you respond. You will not only gain confidence, but also wisdom and peace of mind. This will make your life better and more important. Third, being able to focus means avoiding everything else and giving attention to what's important. The Stoics say that what we think about a lot affects how good our life is. It's about making smart decisions about what to focus on and what to ignore. Aristotle said that the thoughts we have shape our lives it takes practice and self-control to pay attention to what's important. It's hard to stay focused when there are so many things going on around us. This is where stoic methods really shine. They teach your mind to ignore things that aren't important, which helps you focus on your real dreams and goals. Find out what's distracting you before you try to stay away from it. A lot of people worry too much, use social media too much, or try to make everyone happy. Once you know what they are, you can do something to lessen their effect. You could learn to say no to things that don't fit with your beliefs or set times when you don't use technology. On top of that, some routines, like meditation, can help you focus better. It will help you train your mind to be in the present. Figure out what you need to do every day is another good idea. Checking yourself. What's the most important thing I need to do today? It gives everything you do more meaning and boosts your confidence as you live your life the way you want to. Remember that attention isn't just a skill, it's how you live your life. Ignoring the less important things and focusing on the more important ones helps you not only get more done, but also feel calm, which is very important for being confident. That's how Stoics see how important it is to concentrate. The fourth tip is to get tougher. Stoicism teaches us a very important lesson. You don't are born tough. 
you learn to be tough. Stoic toughness is more than just getting through hard times. It means seeing problems as chances to make things better. Seneca said that what is most important is how you handle bad things that happen to you. Being calm means that you should always try to improve yourself. Every issue or tough situation has a lesson hidden inside it. When things go wrong, don't give up. Instead, ask yourself, what can this teach me? When you think this way, every mistake you make is a chance to get better and get stronger. When things get tough, being strong really means being tough as a rock. Trouble doesn't scare you or make you run away. You face it head on. You become stronger and more confident every time you overcome a challenge or face a fear. Remember that being tough isn't just about getting through tough times. It's also about finding the good in them. Every day can look different when you use resilience. You might have to do something you've been putting off or deal with something big, like getting over a loss. Think like a stoic. How you handle things is more important than what occasions you face. So, when you face difficult times, be confident in your ability to overcome them and know that every challenge is an opportunity to improve and grow. This is what it means to be stoic, to turn problems and hard times into strengths and ways to move forward. If you stay strong, your confidence will grow even more. Accepting that life won't always be easy or fair is also part of being strong. It means knowing that we can get through hard times. It's not about giving up when we accept that hard times are a part of life and that we're strong enough to deal with them. Think about the long term instead of just worrying about today's problems if you want to be tough like a stoic. You have to think about the future and see how these hard times can help you get better in the long run. Another great way to get stronger is to be thankful. Thoughts about what you have instead of what you don't have can help you stay upbeat even when things are tough. Being thankful changes the way you see problems so that you see them as chances to learn and get better. Being tougher gets better when you get help from other people and are part of a group. During hard times, it's very helpful to be with people who care about and understand you. You feel better when you connect with other people and they also tell you that you're not facing problems by yourself. Being tough as a stoic is a promise to keep growing in the end. It means seeing every event, good or bad, as a chance to learn something new about yourself and the world around you. This way of thinking helps you enjoy the ups and downs of life, believing that you can handle and achieve no matter what. In conclusion, being tough is a great way to deal with things in life. It demonstrates how we should deal with adversity, learn from it, and use it to advance and become more confident. Being strong and tough helps us not only get through hard times, but also get better, stronger, and more sure of ourselves. Fifth point, become more humble. It's easy to start acting too proud when trying to be confident, but having confidence doesn't mean being cocky. It is very important to be humble in stoic thought. Being humble is one of the best traits a person can have. Epictetus said that you can't learn anything new if you think you already know everything. Being humble helps you learn, get better, and connect with other people in a real way. You're not picking between weakness and strength when you choose between humility and pride. It's about knowing your boundaries and value the information and skills of others. A humble person knows that they can always learn something new and get better no matter how smart or skilled they are. Epictetus says that being humble doesn't mean putting yourself down. It means having a good view of yourself and realizing that you're not the most important person in the world. It can be hard to become more humble every day, especially when people care more about how things look than what they are. Listen more and talk less. Be open to what other people have to say and know that you don't have to be right all the time. When you do well, let other people know. Remember that everyone you meet has been through things you haven't. When you become more humble, your confidence grows steadily 
and over time. People admire and look up to you more, and you become more open and fluid. Being truly humble not only makes you a better person, it also helps you connect with other people better. So, try to be humble. That's the cool way to gain real, deep confidence. To be humble, you have to be able to see and praise other people's wins and good points. This shows them that we value them and helps us see how each person brings something unique and important to the table. This helps us value how different people are and how their success doesn't make someone else's less important. When we are humble, we recognize that we don't know everything and that we may need help from people who do. It means you're strong, not weak. We can improve our relationships and grow as people when we are willing to learn from each other and work together. Being humble also means taking a moment to consider what we did, admitting when we were wrong and trying to make things right. To improve yourself, it's very important. When we know our skills and flaws, we can build real confidence with this kind of honest self-check. Being grateful for what we have, our friends and family, and the chances we get is part of being humble. It helps us pay attention to what's important. Being thankful keeps us connected to the world and to each other, making us feel like we're a part of something bigger. To sum up, one of the most important stoic traits for building strong, long-lasting confidence is humility. To always learn from other people and our surroundings, to treat people with respect and honesty, and to value ourselves without thinking too highly of ourselves are all good things. Being more humble makes us better people and the world a better place to live by showing more care, respect and connection. We have computers that connect us all the time, but strangely, we've never felt more alone and undervalued. We feel like we're yelling into a huge digital void when we want our loved ones to hear us and value us. What do we do when our texts come back unanswered? When being a part of other people's lives seems more like a luxury than a need. Marcus Aurelius taught the old wisdom of Stoicism, which shines a light on these times of thought. He tells us that our real worth comes from inside. But how can we really use this unchanging idea to make ourselves more valuable in our relationships and exchanges with other people? In this section, you will learn realistic, stoic-based ways to build relationships that are real and deep, without using tricks or deception. Remember that the people you hang out with say something about who you are. The main idea of the theory is that we should be useful, not because we need something, but because we are valuable. Let's look at how to apply the Stoic theory to our everyday lives in a way that makes links that are not only deep, but also real and satisfying. Making yourself seem unusual is the first thing you need to do to learn how to get people to prioritize you in their lives. Have you ever thought about why the moon is more beautiful when it's not full all the time? We feel the same way. To be more highly valued, the first thing you should do is make yourself seem rare. These words serve as a sobering warning that our time and attention are limited, like gold dust. Now think that you live in a busy time and are the type of person who always says yes when asked. What does that say? It says, I'm always available, and that's not a gem, it's a shop. Now change the order. A rare book in a library is easy to find but not always easy to find. Make people feel like you're not there. It's not about being difficult to get. It's about appreciating your time. It's said that Marcus Aurelius, whose name is often associated with wisdom, said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. In this quote, he encourages us to value ourselves first before looking for approval from others. A careful balance is needed for this practice. It's not about being distant or cold. It's about having a good sense of self-worth. When you answer every call right away, you give in to other people's needs. But when you carefully engage, you're telling people, I value my time and you should too. 
This doesn't mean ignoring them. It means engaging with them in a thoughtful way. It means not being afraid to say no, which will make your yes stronger. Giving someone your time and care should be a gift, not something they expect. Accept this first lesson. Think of yourself as a unique comet, not just another star in the sky. Your time and attention are valuable, so make good use of them. You'll notice a change when you do. If people don't have to be around you, they'll value it more because it's unique. Putting worth on yourself is the first step to being appreciated more. Time is the one thing you can't get back, so treat it like a secret gem. One of the most important things we can do to become more valuable through Stoicism is to avoid always being approachable. Stoicism isn't just saying no for the sake of saying no. It's about making sure that your yes fits with your ideals. Think of each day as a palette and your time as the paint. You have a limited amount of paint to make your life a painting. Would you let someone else paint or would you take control and paint where you think it looks best? It's possible to show a lot of care for your own life and goals by saying no. A wise person would tell you, we are the architects of our own fate. This isn't about being selfish, it's about having respect for yourself. People will value your time if you do. They'll see that your yes isn't taken lightly and is a sign of real dedication and regard. Balance is what this is all about. It's not about building walls, but about making rules. You can think of these limits as the sides of a river. They keep your time and energy flowing in the right direction toward what's most important. People will learn to value the times they do spend with you more if you're not always available. People will want and value you like a rare book in a library. Your appearance stops being expected and starts being a gift. You are living up to the stoic ideal by taking charge of your time and yourself. Think of the time you have as a valuable gem that shines in your hands. Giving someone your time is like giving them a piece of this gem. You won't have any pieces left for yourself if you give them to everyone who asks. You don't become a hermit. Instead, you become picky about how you spend your time and put it where it counts. Let's move on to the third point in our quest to become more useful and important to others, keeping a sense of wonder. In the world around us, wonder builds its web in silence, like a spider making art that no one can see. Practicing this quiet art of surprise is not only a way to show control, but also a way to attract people who value you. Stoicism, a theory that comes from ancient wisdom, can help us get to the bottom of this mysterious practice. It's not about hiding yourself in the dark. Rather, it's about picking when to come out into the light. To start, picture your life as a book with parts that move quickly to keep the reader interested. Tell your story, but don't say too much. Just enough to get people interested. It would be like giving someone a plan that shows where the secret riches are, but not how to get to them. This makes you find yourself more and more with each encounter, as more layers are peeled back to show more depth and character. We make room for others to lean in, wonder and respect the story of our lives as it unfolds when we know how to selectively share. Stoicism shows us how powerful our inner guide can be. People have said things like, he who reigns within himself and rules his passions, desires and fears is more than a king. This doesn't mean building walls around your core. It means picking the gates through which you let others enter. When you control the flow of your personal discoveries, you create an atmosphere where your presence is rare and valuable. There is a dance going on between what is known and what is unknown. Each step is planned not just a random mistake. Keep in mind that surprise is a tactic for self-respect, not for trickery. You should know how much you're worth and not give it away like water to people who might not understand how deep it goes. There is a lot of pressure in the world to be open and honest, so what you choose to share shows how much you value yourself. People will value you more if you act in this way, and you will value yourself more too. 
In the end, the biggest secret you can keep is that there's more to you than meets the eye. Picture yourself at a fork in the road. One way leads to independence on your own and the other leads to growth for everyone. Here comes the fourth step on our stoic path to being more valued, letting other people invest in you. It's a sensitive art that doesn't come from a sense of self-importance, but from making others' lives better. In his timeless wisdom, Seneca hints at this by saying that he liked being picked for jobs that made him better. By allowing others to help and give you advice, you're not showing weakness, you're inviting a shared power. Building bridges, not walls, is what this method is all about. More than just being willing to accept help, it's about making sure others feel like their efforts are valued and valued. It's like a garden, you're the farmer, and other people are welcome to plant seeds of wisdom, support, and kindness. Every seed they plant makes your garden grow, and when they see their work mature, they feel good about what they did. This improvement for both sides leads to stronger bonds and more respect. It's about making a circle of giving and getting that works for everyone. People who value real relationships and progress will be drawn to you because you are open. Let's connect this practice to the real world we live in. It's in the little things, like when you accept help from a co-worker on a project, listen to tips from a friend, or just be open to new ideas. Being open in one way or another is a step toward a more linked and valuable life. You're not just a single person going through life. You're part of a bigger picture held together by shared events and help from each other. As a modern Stoic, accept that we are all connected and thankful for it. The world will then welcome you back. Don't forget that Marcus Aurelius said, what is good for the hive is good for the bee. Their investment in you and your growth are not only linked, they are what makes life worth living. Moving on to the fifth step in our plan to become more useful and important to others. Putting your own needs first. It's not selfish to put your wants first, it's necessary. Let's say you're on a plane and the gas masks fall off. You should put yours on first before helping other people, right? That's not just for flying, it's a rule for living. This attitude is echoed by Stoicism, a theory that is just as useful today as it was then. Stoic philosopher Seneca once said, it is not the man who has too little that is poor, it is the man who desires more that is poor. This doesn't mean storing things, it means realizing that meeting your own basic needs is the first step to being a source of strength for others. You're not turning your back on other people when you put your own needs first. Instead, you're building up your own power and security. Think of your life as a garden. You can't share the beauty and shade of your plants with others if you don't water and care for them first. Your needs, whether they're for rest, growth or mental support, are like water and sunshine for your yard. It's important to take care of yourself so that you have the energy, kindness and resources to help the people around you. This isn't about shutting yourself off. It's about finding a balance so that your health isn't always put at risk. To act on your goals, you need to do more than just be aware of them. Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one, said Marcus Aurelius, another Stoic philosopher. To be a good man, you have to make hard decisions, set limits, and sometimes say no. You won't find it easy, but it's the only way to get real respect and self-worth. You become a rock of sincerity and integrity when you constantly act in ways that are in line with your wants and ideals. Being solid and sure of yourself makes people automatically drawn to you. So start today by putting your needs first. Then watch as people around you start to value you in deeper, more profound ways. The sixth most important thing this video says is that you shouldn't make other people the center of your life. As we try to find our way through life's maze, we often forget the guide inside us and rely on other people to show us the way. Stoicism teaches us to take back our story. It is not a theory of cold disinterest, but of deep strength. 
Not putting other people at the center of our lives isn't a lesson in loneliness. It's a way to truly value yourself. Think of yourself as the leader of a ship in the huge seas of life. Other ships may sail next to you, and some may even try to guide you. You still have control of the wheel, though. Seneca said, We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. If we don't put our worth in the hands of other people, we can avoid storms in our imagination. Set your goals, make your choices, and value your thoughts with the firmness of a captain facing the seas. Now think of your time and energy as the most valuable things you own. Would you waste your money? If you want to spend this cash carefully, don't make other people the center of your life. Spend time with people and do things that make you happy and are in line with your values. Quality is more important than number. Your time is a gift. Give it to people who appreciate you for who you are, not to people who want you to be like them. Learn how to pay attention to only some things at a time. In a world full of ideas and judgments, learn to keep your attention on what's important, your trip, your growth, and your happiness. The world is still there, but you don't have to ignore it. Instead, choose not to let it affect how you feel about yourself. Working on your skills and following your interests will make you less dependent on outside sources of approval. Remember that you are the creator of your life. Work on it with purpose and attention on your inner voice and vision. People will value you more if you follow these stoic principles, but what's more important is that you will grow to deeply respect and love yourself. It's not about ignoring other people on this trip. It's about finding your own beat in life's music. The next piece of advice in this video might come as a surprise to you. Don't start every talk. Instead of talking, try listening. It might be the game changer you've been looking for. According to the Stoic theory, this practice urges people not to start every talk. Think about how powerful silence and listening can be. Not only should you be quiet, but you should also let other people say what they want. The way you connect with others and how they see you can change because of this change. Epictetus and Stoic wisdom both stress the importance of the balance between our ears and mouths. He subtly hinted, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. This isn't just an old saying, it's a powerful lesson in a world where people talk too much. You make room for others to speak when you don't always talk first. You can take in, understand, and think in this place, not just respond. The idea is to find strength in silence and wisdom in hearing. Now think of the last time someone really paid attention to what you had to say. How did you feel? Respected, known, and maybe even important. That's what you give people when you let them start the talk. That's a quiet but powerful way to show that you value and care about what they have to say. In this way, you're not just hearing what they say, you're also recognizing their feelings and thoughts, which helps you connect with them in a deeper way. This world moves quickly and everyone wants to talk. Being the person who listens makes you stand out. It shows growth, patience, and a real interest in other people, which are all traits that are respected and hard to find. You shouldn't never say what you think, but you should pick the right times to do so. Your words will have more weight when you talk, because they come from a place of understanding and care. To get better at this, start by watching how you connect with others. Pay attention to the desire to jump in and fight it, Pay attention to what the other person is saying, ask questions, and show that you are interested. Then, let the talk run easily. Not being present is not the point. Being present on purpose is. This habit will not only make your relationships better over time, but it will also help you learn more about other people and the world around you. Remember that wisdom often talks the loudest when there is no one else around. We looked at seven stern habits that can change your life. Each one is a step toward being more valuable and respected. Remember that the path to bettering yourself and your relationships isn't just a list. 
it's a way of life. Follow these habits. Be brave but thoughtful, patient but aggressive, carefully available but mysterious, and open to what others have to say. Put your health and freedom first, and let other people come to you. It's not about seeking approval, it's about making your life more balanced. These are useful tips that you can use all your life. They shape how you see yourself as well as how other people see you. Strong, admired, and valuable. Now that you know these lessons, apply them to your daily life and see how things change. Not only are your relationships getting better, but you're also growing as a person. Don't forget that this is just the start. You have a lot of wisdom waiting for you to find it and make it your own. In a crazy world full of feelings and problems, calm wisdom comes back stronger than ever. We learn something freeing from it. Sometimes we need to let go of relationships, even ones with family and friends, in order to grow. This is not a call to be alone, but to be real and find inner peace. We're going to look at 11 signs that it's time to break up. Get comfortable so you can fully understand what's being said. Now let's begin. 1. When relationships get in the way of your personal growth, it leaves us with a deep message. Friendship that can end was never real. This quote makes us think about what real friendship and family love are all about. In an ideal world, both should be strongholds that support and direct our never-ending search for wisdom and morality. But it's important to know that the ties we keep up can sometimes take us away from this growth road. When we understand that our emotional ties are pulling us away from our true path, we need to think deeply and honestly about what we are doing. Now is the time to think about and question these links again. This re-evaluation isn't easy. You have to look inside yourself and often have the courage to make tough choices. It may be necessary to rethink old relationships, ask ourselves how our families work, or even grow apart from friends who bring us down instead of up. It's a way to learn about and love yourself more than anything else. Important thing to know is that the people we choose to share our trip with have a direct effect on our own growth. Relationships that are healthy and helpful are the ones that push us to be better, accept who we are and our life goals, and support us to do those things. It is important to remember Seneca's wise words when we are in relationships that seem to be getting in the way of our progress. We should seek genuine relationships, those that withstand the test of time and adversity, support our quest for wisdom, and most importantly, walk alongside us toward virtue. It is a path of discoveries, challenges, and often necessary renewals. Number two, when destructive emotions take over the relationship, it's a good time to think about and focus on the destructive emotions that can take over relationships. You have power over your mind, not external events. Realize this and you will find strength, advises Marcus Aurelius, one of the most well-known Stoic philosophers. When these bad feelings happen over and over again and take over our relationships, they can pull us away from our true inner power. In a dangerous loop, they make us respond and act automatically in ways that we can't always control. While anger, jealousy and bitterness are normal human emotions, they can get in the way of finding peace and self-control. The challenge is to be aware of these negative feelings and know that we have control over how we respond to them. There are things that happen outside of our control that Marcus Aurelius teaches us, but we have full control over how we react to them. Self-mastery and self-analysis are skills that you need to keep your mental and emotional health in good shape when you're in a tough relationship. In the event that we realize that a relationship is consistently making us feel bad, it is important to look at how that relationship works. It's important to think about whether this relationship is good for our health and growth, or whether it keeps us in a steady state of mental stress. In the end, when we're dealing with negative feelings in our relationships, 
we need to find the inner power that Marcus Aurelius talks about. This means being patient, understanding, and empathetic, but it also means setting healthy limits and, if necessary, ending relationships that keep us from reaching our full intellectual and emotional potential. We learn to value relationships that make us feel good and get away from those that make us feel bad. This is a road of self-discovery and personal strength. Dealing with the problem of manipulation and control in human relationships is very important if you want to understand the Stoic view on individualism that Epicurus, one of the most famous thinkers from this school of thought, stressed. He gives us advice in a powerful phrase, no one is free who is not master of himself. This saying captures the core of freedom and self-government, which are important for personal growth and well-being. In any kind of partnership, manipulation and control are clear signs that one's freedom is being taken away. When someone else constantly affects or tells us what to do, think and decide, that is a major violation of our personal freedom. Stoic ideals, which value self-mastery and the freedom of the person, are at odds with this situation. It's important to know how to spot a relationship that is dominating or manipulative. They can show up in many ways, such as constant criticism, low self-esteem, being cut off from family and friends, or even making choices without asking others what they think. The person's lack of self-confidence and the circle of mental and psychological dependence that follows make it impossible for them to break free. The first step to freedom is realizing that you are in a situation that limits your freedom. Epicurus says that being in charge of yourself is the only way to be truly free. Self-control means setting healthy limits in your life and, if necessary, ending relationships that keep you from having the freedom you need. It can be hard and even painful to decide to end a relationship with someone who is manipulative. It takes courage, though, and is an important step toward taking back control of one's life. The path to freedom is one of self-discovery, self-affirmation, and most of all, reaffirming one's own worth and freedom. To sum up, spotting connections that control or manipulate us and stepping away from them is a very self-respecting thing to do. Epictetus said that we should try to be in charge of our own lives and build relationships with other people that respect our independence and help us reach our full potential. Fourth, when the relationship does more harm than good, it's important to stress the value of each person's inner well-being when talking about how relationships that do more harm than good work. Toxic relationships, which drain your energy, make you feel bad all the time, and make your surroundings bad, are the exact opposite of personal growth and development. In this situation, it's important to know that a relationship is unhealthy if there is constant stress, unsolved issues, disrespect for each other, and a lack of mental support. These kinds of relationships not only stop people from growing, but they can also make their mental and physical health worse. Most of the time, toxic relationships show up as things like endless criticism, not understanding, manipulating, or even mental abuse. When these things happen, they make the person feel stuck and unable to move forward in their personal or work life. To find inner peace, you need to be in a place that encourages happiness, respect, mutual support, and most of all, mental and emotional health. When these things can't be done because of a relationship, it's clear that things need to change. If you want to take care of yourself and respect yourself, you should stay away from a poisonous relationship. It might be hard to make this choice, and you might feel guilty or scared about it, but it is an important step toward building healthy, positive relationships that really help your growth and well-being. Getting out of a bad relationship is also a time to think about things and learn new things. There is a chance to boost self-esteem, remind oneself of ideals and goals, 
and learn more about the kind of relationship that makes life more enjoyable. Because of this, it is important to know how to spot a bad relationship and have the courage to leave when you need to. After all, we should make it a goal to improve our inner health and grow as people. The ties we build are very important in this process. Fifth, mutual respect is very important in relationships, especially since Stoic ideas value dignity and self-control. If there is a lack of it, then the relationship is not healthy. These values can't exist in relationships where people don't respect each other. This can create an atmosphere of miscommunication, low worth and constant stress. Respect is the building block of all good interactions. It means recognizing that people are different, being able to listen and see things from the other person's point of view and showing understanding and care. Without respect, it's hard to communicate, disagreements get worse and unity falls apart. When people in a partnership don't respect each other, it often shows up as disrespect, mean comments, not caring about the other person's wants and feelings, or even violent behavior. These views not only hurt the relationship, but they also hurt the people involved self-esteem and mental health. Keeping your dignity and self-control in all of your relationships is important, as the Stoics teach. In other words, we should treat others with the same care and respect that we want for ourselves. If a relationship is missing this basic thing, it turns bad and messed up. When there is no equal respect, it is time to look at the relationship and decide what needs to be changed to get things back in balance. In some cases, this may entail separating oneself from the other person, especially if rudeness is a repeating and unfixable habit. Recognizing when someone doesn't respect you in a relationship and taking steps to fix it or remove yourself from it is important for maintaining your dignity and mental health. It comes down to picking relationships based on mutual respect. This is in line with stoic ideas of dignity and self-control and leads to a sense of self-worth and personal growth. Sixth, the stoic method stresses strongly accepting reality as it is, even when the connection makes it hard to do so. This is also true for relationships between people. Having relationships that hold us to false beliefs or help us ignore reality is not helpful and can be very damaging. Stoics say that accepting reality doesn't mean being passive or giving up. Instead, it means having a clear, objective view of the world as it is, without any unrealistic hopes or ideals. When we apply this idea to our relationships, it's clear that keeping connections based on lies or denying facts keeps us from living in a genuine and honest way. When someone in a relationship encourages us to ignore the truth, whether through dreams, making up reasons for bad behavior all the time, or creating a different world, they keep us from really understanding ourselves and others. This separation from reality can make us forget important problems, make choices based on skewed views, and stay disappointed all the time. This kind of relationship can have broken promises, high demands, or even problems that aren't being talked about. These events make us want to be angry and unhappy because we are always looking for something that doesn't exist in the real world. It can be hard to face the truth in a relationship, especially when it means giving up ideals that we hold dear. But it's an important step for growing as a person and making connections that are better and more reasonable. Stoics give us the courage to accept truth, deal with things as they are, and find peace in that knowledge. So, it's very important to know how to tell if a connection is based on fantasy rather than truth. By recognizing these patterns and separating ourselves from them, we can find our way back to a more genuine and rewarding life that is in line with the stoic ideas of accepting reality as it is and having a clear understanding of it. Seventh, if you are giving up your values, Living in line with your values is an important part of Stoicism and a key part of living a full and worthwhile life. 
We are in a tough spot when we are in relationships that make us give up or betray our core values. This is something we should think about and reevaluate. Our personal values help us make choices, decide what to do, and figure out how to connect with the world around us. They show what we really believe and what we think is important and true. When someone in a relationship asks us to give up or ignore these values, it not only hurts our morals, but can also make us feel very unhappy and uncomfortable. There are many ways that a relationship that requires giving up ideals can show itself. It could mean being forced to do something that goes against what we think is right, to put up with behavior that we think is wrong, or even to give up important parts of who we are. At first, these concessions may not seem like a big deal, but they can add up and hurt our self-esteem and sense of self-respect over time. Stoicism teaches us how important it is to live in line with our ideals. This entails having the courage to make tough decisions, staying away from things that will take us off track, and looking for connections that respect and reflect our core values. It's not easy to look at a relationship again in light of how well it fits with our values. It could be caused by inner tensions, loyalty, fear of being alone, or fear of change. But keeping true to your ideals is good for your mental and emotional health and shows that you respect yourself and are real. So, it's important to be aware of how our interactions affect and show what we believe in. When we understand that our core values are being violated, we should really think about whether this relationship is good for our health and growth. Picking ways that are in line with our values is not only a stoic concept, it's also a key part of living a real and satisfying life. Eighth, if the connection isn't mutual, it won't last. In any relationship, reciprocity is important for its health and longevity. Because one person always gives and the other always gets, there is an unbalance that can be harmful and can't last in the long run. When two people in a relationship give and receive in a fair and equal way, the relationship is balanced. This exchange doesn't have to be exact or right away all the time, but there should always be a feeling of support and cooperation. One side is always the giver, and the other side is always the receiver. This creates an unfair situation that can make people feel angry, tired, and unimportant. This kind of one-sided relationship can show up in many ways, such as emotionally, where one person is always there to support the other and rarely does the same, or practically, when doing daily chores or making big choices. When the mismatch happens all the time, it stops being a team and turns into a problem for one person. If you see signs of a relationship that doesn't work for both people, you should talk about it. This might mean having honest talks about wants and needs, setting new limits and duties, and sometimes rethinking whether the relationship can last in the long run. It's important to keep in mind that self-respect and self-esteem are also at risk in this situation. The idea that you are worthless can be damaged by putting yourself in a constant situation of giving without getting proper value and care. In light of this, Finding balance in a relationship is both a matter of kindness and self-care. To keep relationships healthy and fulfilling, it is important to seek exchange. Balanced relationships help both people grow, accept each other, and be happy. We should aim for and build these kinds of connections in our lives for our own health and the health of the people we connect with. Number 9. Abuse of any kind is never okay in any kind of interaction. Because Stoic wisdom stresses how important it is to treat yourself with respect and dignity, it is clear that we should never put up with harmful or cruel behavior. Abuse can show up in many forms, such as physical, mental, emotional, verbal, or even financial. No matter what form it takes, it is very bad for the mental, physical, and social health of the person who goes through it. A pattern of control, bullying, separation, and fear can be seen in abusive partnerships. 
Stoicism teaches us to accept and value who we are. This means knowing how valuable we are on our own and not letting anyone treat us in a way that hurts our character or health. Being in a violent relationship is like living in a place that constantly devalues and dehumanizes us, which is the exact opposite of what the Stoics would consider a good and honorable life. The first thing you need to do to get help and change is admit that you are in a violent situation. Understanding that abuse is never okay and that the abuser is responsible for it, not the victim, is very important. In order to get out of this position, you need to get help from friends, family or experts. Leaving a situation where someone is abusing you can be hard and needs courage and support but it is an important step toward getting back your freedom, self-respect, and self-esteem. When you're getting over a violent relationship, you have to remind yourself of your own worth and strength. Because of this, it is very important to know the signs of abuse and act right away to protect yourself. It's important to follow the stoic ideas of self-worth and self-respect on this trip. Everyone has the right to live a life that is free from abuse and treated with respect. Tenth, when communication fails over and over again. Good communication is an important part of any good relationship. Stoic philosophy says that unity and mutual understanding are very important, but they are very hard to achieve when communication fails all the time, whether it's on one side or both sides are constantly fighting. Misunderstandings, anger and frustration are common in relationships where people don't talk to each other enough. When one person controls the talk or doesn't give the other person a chance to say what they want, it's called one-sided communication. In the same way, conversation that is constantly tense and unable to find common ground can be tiring and wearisome. The Stoics respect balance and unity both within themselves and with other people. They believe that we should try to understand each other and talk to each other peacefully, stay out of fights that aren't necessary, and encourage an atmosphere of mutual respect. It is important to practice active hearing, explain oneself clearly and politely, and be open to discussion and understanding the other person's point of view if successful communication is necessary to achieve these goals. This means being able to talk about problems freely, share thoughts and wants, and work together to find good answers. If conversation regularly breaks down and attempts to make it better fail, the relationship may need to be looked at again. Sometimes getting help from a professional, like a couple's therapist or psychologist, can help you get past these communication problems. So, keeping up healthy and useful conversation is essential for any relationship to stay healthy and last a long time. In line with stoic beliefs of balance and mutual understanding, this is an important part of both personal well-being and building healthy, meaningful relationships. Number 11. If the relationship makes you feel less calm, Inner calm and peace are important parts of the Stoic theory, and keeping them up is key to living a full and healthy life. When relationships make us feel uneasy all the time, it's a clear sign that we need to carefully question these relationships and, if necessary, re-evaluate them or even end them. St. Augustine said that people should try to find peace and relationships that cause constant internal turmoil through arguments, stress, worry or fear are not in line with this. Stoicism teaches us to value mental balance and stay calm inside, even when things are hard in the outside world. A relationship that causes a lot of stress makes it harder to reach this state of peace. Not only does it hurt our mental health, but it can also make us feel bad all the time, making it hard to enjoy life and do things that matter. In this case, it's important to think about how the connection affects our health. This means thinking about how the relationship makes us feel, whether there is a pattern of negative that can't be fixed, and whether our efforts to make the relationship better have been in vain. 
It is never easy to end a relationship, especially when there are strong feelings involved. Stoic thought, on the other hand, pushes us to choose what is best for our health and mental peace. In this case, we might need to get away from relationships that are making us feel bad. It's important to remember that looking for peace is not greed. It's an important step for staying alive and living by our better ideals. It is important to have the courage to make hard decisions when we are in situations that keep upsetting our peace of mind. We should always be aiming for inner peace and balance. The end of a relationship is not a failure, but rather a brave step towards sincerity and personal wisdom. As Epictetus said, the first and greatest victory is to conquer oneself. Even though it will be hard, this path is a chance to grow and remember our most important ideals and principles. Always keep in mind that every choice we make, especially ones that help us leave bad situations, takes courage and a lot of self-respect. Taking on this conservative path not only protects our health, but it also leads to a better, more satisfying life. To Stoics, things outside of ourselves, like other people, events or circumstances, are out of our control. All we have control over is our own thoughts, choices and deeds. So, we should focus on the things we can control and accept the things we can't control with peace of mind. Getting rid of negative feelings like anger, fear, envy or lust that make us act irrationally and upset our peace of mind is one of the main goals of Stoicism. Stoics say that these feelings come from having wrong or incorrect ideas about what is good and bad. They say that we can get rid of these emotions by looking at our beliefs and changing them. Relationships with other people, especially those of the opposite sex, are one area of life where Stoicism can help. Stoics think that we should be kind, fair and respectful to everyone, no matter what their past is or what gender they are. However, they also warn us of the risks and threats that can come from our sexual wants and ties and they tell us to be very careful when we're with women. Let's talk about a part of Stoicism that is especially important for men. What a man should always keep from a woman. It might sound weird or even sexist, but this is not the case. It comes from the Stoic view of how people are and what men and women should do in society. It comes from the Stoic idea of self-mastery, which says that we should be quiet and humble about some things. What are these things that a guy should never tell a woman? These are eight of them. The Stoic theory says that a Stoic man follows a set of unchanging rules that guide his way of life, especially when he faces problems and weaknesses. Stoicism is based on the idea that how someone handles hardship is the only real way to judge their character. Stoic men don't give in to their normal urges to complain or look for comfort when they are having a bad day. Stoicism, a term that includes qualities like patience, forbearance, acceptance, fortitude and endurance, is a crucial component of this Stoic philosophy. Rather than trying to hide your feelings or say that pain doesn't exist, you should face these problems with a clear head. Stoicism teaches that although one's outward situations may be out of one's control, one can still choose how to react to them. Even from people close to him, like his lover or wife, the silent man doesn't try to get support or grief from others. Instead, he pulls on his own power and resilience, knowing that true fortitude is found within oneself. Stoicism puts a lot of value on being able to take care of yourself, which means building up an inner strength that doesn't depend on approval or sympathy from other people. Standard wisdom might say that being open about your weaknesses and asking for help is a sign of strength, but Stoicism sees things differently. The Stoic man knows that suffering in quiet can be strength building, not just for the sake of being Stoic, but for building a strong and calm spirit. This quiet isn't an attempt to hide how I feel. It's a choice to deal with problems with unshackable inner power. Most importantly, 
The calm man doesn't let his flaws make him doubt himself or lose confidence. He instead sees these flaws as chances for development and self-improvement. According to the Stoic view, every problem and struggle is an opportunity to become a better, stronger person. The calm man finds the raw materials for his own change when he admits his flaws. Stoics believe that life is a process of self-discovery and self-mastery that never ends. Every problem is not a problem, but a stepping stone that gives you a chance to get better at residing with virtue. For a Stoic man, following this theory means meeting life's risks with calm inner strength. This gives him a deep sense of purpose and satisfaction. Even though the world is full of chaos and uncertainty, the calm man shows how strong a controlled mind and an unbreakable spirit can be. His mistakes. The stoic way of dealing with mistakes is very wise and educational, especially when thinking about how a man and a woman interact with each other. As a stoic sees it, mistakes are not just oversights or errors. They are important steps on the way to gain wisdom and improve oneself. So, a patient man handles his mistakes with a mix of respect, hard work, and learning from his own mistakes. One important part of the silent way of dealing with mistakes is not telling anyone about them, especially women, because it could be seen as a sign of stupidity or foolishness. From this point of view, hiding your flaws out of shame or fear is not the point. Instead, it comes from knowing that mistakes are opportunities to learn. The calm man knows that talking about his mistakes might not always make things better in a relationship or conversation. Stoics believe that values such as humility and diligence help people deal with mistakes. A calm man knows that to err is human, but he doesn't make mistakes all the time. He does his work and makes choices after giving them a lot of thought which makes mistakes less likely. When he does make a mistake though, he doesn't try to hide it. His attitude is that he sees them as chances to improve himself. Stoic practice is based on the idea that you should learn from your mistakes. The calm man thinks about his mistakes without beating himself up or feeling too guilty. Instead, he does it with a clear head, trying to figure out what went wrong and what lessons can be learned. For mistakes to become useful life lessons that help you handle similar situations with more wisdom in the future, you need to think about them and analyze them. The stern man also learns from his mistakes by being disciplined and persistent. He knows that getting better is an ongoing process that needs constant work. He doesn't let his mistakes define him. Instead, he uses them to make himself better and change for the better. One of the most important Stoic principles is to own up to your mistakes. The calm man doesn't play the blame game. He doesn't blame others or feel bad about blaming himself. He owns up to what he did and the results of it, and he focuses on how he can fix things and avoid making the same mistake again. This way of thinking was summed up perfectly by the Stoic philosopher Epictetus. It is not the things that happen to us that bother us, but our opinions about them. This deep statement supports the Stoic belief that how we see and react to events, even our own mistakes, determines how they affect us. In the end, a Stoic man's response to mistakes is a complex web of respect, learning, and taking responsibility for one's actions. He doesn't try to hide his mistakes, Rather, he uses them to build up his inner wisdom and resilience. By using stoic values and seeing mistakes as chances to grow, he goes through life with a better understanding and a promise to keep improving himself. He had dreams. The stoic view of hopes and dreams comes from a mindset of reality, logic and self-sufficiency. In this way of thinking, the stoic man tackles his dreams with a unique mix of groundedness and focus, avoiding ego and fantasy. This attitude changes how he acts and talks, especially when he wants to talk to a woman about his hopes and dreams. From a stoic point of view, hopes and goals are not the same as silly fancies or impossible wishes. 
people instead see them as worthwhile activities that fit with their values and skills. That's why a stoic man is careful about telling other people about his dreams, not to keep them a secret, but to avoid falling into the trap of ego and the need for approval from others. This lack of action doesn't mean I don't want to achieve things. It's just a reflection of the stoic principle of focusing on what you can control and affect. Stoics believe that following your dreams is not based on wanting praise or attention from other people, including a love partner. The stoic man follows his inner direction and seeks happiness and satisfaction by growing as a person and reaching goals that are honest to himself. He knows that looking for approval from other people can leave him feeling let down and take away from his real goal of improving himself. This way of thinking about dreams is related to the stoic practice of concentrating on tasks and attainable goals. The stoic man focuses his energy on goals that he can reach. He uses his passion and purpose to do things that make his life and the lives of those around him better. He knows that wasting time and energy on things he can't control or that don't affect his happiness is a waste. The reserved man also has a strong sense of independence and self-reliance when it comes to his dreams. He doesn't depend on other people to form or support his goals. Instead, he trusts his own judgment and inner voice and he uses his inner resources to reach his goals. Being self-reliant doesn't mean he doesn't want help from other people. It means he believes he can choose the path of his life. Emperor Marcus Aurelius, who was Stoic, said, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. This quote sums up the Stoic belief that true happiness and fulfillment come from within and are shaped by the nature and quality of one's thoughts and perspectives. To a Stoic man, Dreams are not just wishful thinking, they are signs of a mind that is thoughtful and driven. Being realistic, being self-reliant and focusing on one's own values and skills are what the stoic man does when he thinks about his dreams. He looks at his goals through the lenses of what is realistic and what makes him feel good about himself. He wants to reach goals that will make him truly happy and that are in line with his values. This calm and reflective approach to dreams shows how Stoics are dedicated to living a life based on thoughtful, purposeful and self-sufficient principles. Though Stoicism is a deep intellectual field, the Stoic man's connection with his emotions and feelings is a complex study of self-awareness, attention and control of inner states. Stoic ideas say that we should understand our feelings instead of trying to hide them. He deals with his emotions in a healthy way, knowing that they affect his decisions and actions. There is a false belief that Stoicism means keeping your feelings in check. A Stoic man does not try to do that. He instead holds them with a deep awareness and attention. Stoics don't see feelings as enemies that need to be beaten. Instead, they see them as signs that tell you important things about your inner state. The calm man learns more about himself and is better able to handle the challenges of life when he recognizes and understands his feelings. The calm man is very aware of how his emotions and feelings might affect the decisions and actions he makes. Stoicism says that a wise person doesn't let their feelings take over their thinking. Instead, they use emotional intelligence to make smart decisions. By keeping this balance, the stoic man makes sure that his reactions to outside events are not based on passing feelings, but on a careful and deliberate process of thought. The quiet man is aware of his feelings, but he is careful about how he shows them to other people. This choice isn't an act of pretending not to care about his feelings. It comes from a real desire to show his feelings in a way that is acceptable and helpful for those around him. His knowledge makes him aware that showing his feelings to anyone, even his lover or wife, may not always be good for relationships. Because the stoic man wants to appear logical and calm, he chooses to hide some of his feelings from other people. When it comes to stoicism, 
The goal is not to be emotionally detached, but to control your feelings. By picking and choosing when and how to talk about his feelings, he tries to show that he is calm and logical so that he doesn't seem nuts or highly emotional to other people. Stoics believe that feelings and emotions should not be thrown away, but instead should be harnessed and used to gain wisdom and self-awareness. Stoics deal with their feelings in a way that shows how reason and emotion can work together in harmony, creating a dynamic balance that leads to a life of balance, resilience and careful interaction with the world. In the end, the silent man's way of dealing with his emotions is a complex dance between knowing himself, being emotionally intelligent and knowing when to show his feelings. In the big picture of Stoic virtues, the way he deals with his feelings is like a brushstroke that draws a picture of a thoughtful, logical and emotionally intelligent person managing the complicated landscapes of life. Stoic philosophy says that keeping personal secrets is closely linked to the ideas of honor, privacy and respect for oneself and others. This way of thinking affects how a silent man shares his thoughts especially when he is with a woman. Stoics don't keep secrets just for the sake of keeping them. They know how important it is to maintain their dignity and to respect others' privacy. Stoics think that secrets show what a person is like inside and what they've been through. They are carefully guarded not because they might hold something embarrassing or bad, but because they represent a person's privacy and personal dignity. A man who is quiet respects the privacy of his own thoughts and feelings and knows that not everyone, not even close friends and family, needs to know everything about his life. In Stoic thought, discretion is a very important virtue and it leads how a Stoic man deals with other people. He doesn't spread rumors or lies about other people because he knows that doing so hurts his own reputation and breaks people's trust. He decides to keep his mouth shut out of respect for the privacy of both himself and others, not out of fear of being found out. This restraint shows that he values the privacy of individual spaces and the strength of shared convictions. Honesty and dependability are very important to Stoics. The man with the stern face is determined to keep his word and stay honest. He doesn't deliberately lie or betray other people because he knows that doing so would go against his morals and hurt their trust in him. His respect stretches to how he handles his own secrets and the secrets that other people have given him. How the reserved man handles secrets is also marked by a caring and caring attitude. He doesn't tell or use other people's secrets, not even his own. Instead, he keeps them safe because he knows that doing so shows respect for their privacy and dignity. This defensive attitude isn't meant to hide the truth or avoid taking responsibility. Instead, it's meant to protect the sacredness of personal experiences and inner lives. A big part of how Stoics handle secrets is trusting themselves. The man with the steely resolve keeps his secrets to himself and uses his own good sense to decide what to share and what to keep hidden. His confidence in his capacity to control his own inner world is reflected in this self-trust, not in isolation or fear of others. Stoic philosophers believe that the inner self, which includes ideas, feelings, experiences and secrets, is holy. The great orator Cicero said, the most sacred thing in the world is the human soul. This very well captures the Stoic belief in this. For the Stoic man, keeping his secrets safe and respecting the secrets of others is a way to honor the soul as something holy. To sum up, the stern man's way of keeping his secrets is a careful mix of honor, privacy and respect. Some parts of his life don't need to be shared and he respects the privacy and dignity of his inner life. He cares about privacy, reliability and protecting personal limits, which shows that he values the purity of the human soul. 
Following this way of life makes the Stoic man embody the ideals of Stoicism, living a life marked by honesty, privacy, and developing a good and honorable inner self. His pains. The Stoic man's attitude to pain is a testament to his resilience, fortitude, and steadfast dedication to keeping inner calm, according to the weave of Stoic philosophy. This point of view has a big effect on how he deals with and talks about his problems, especially when he's in a relationship with a woman. The Stoic view of pain is not about denying or hiding it, but about getting past it and facing problems with a calm and positive attitude. From a Stoic point of view, showing your pain in public, especially in a love relationship, could be seen as a sign of pain and suffering. The Stoic man, on the other hand, doesn't give up when things get hard. Instead, he takes a composed and positive attitude, knowing that problems are an inevitable part of life. The Stoic man's response to pain is characterized by endurance. He doesn't let pain control his mood or behavior. Instead, he approaches it with fortitude. Stoicism says that dealing with problems with ease is not a sign of weakness, but of power and resilience. This is what the calm man believes, and he chooses to deal with his pain, with patience, and, surprisingly, joy. The stoic man doesn't moan or groan when he's in pain. Instead, he handles his pain with ease and thanks. This choice isn't based on a sadistic need to suffer. It's based on the knowledge that going through pain with grace is a process that changes you. The calm man knows that pain, like everything else in life, can be a chance to learn more about himself and grow. The Stoic theory supports a unique way of looking for pain relief. A Stoic man doesn't actively look for comfort or instant relief from his aches. He thinks of pain as a test that will make him stronger. Seeing pain as a chance to learn and grow changes his view of it making it an important and significant part of his journey. He doesn't react to pain by showing weakness or trying to get pity. Instead, the stoic man sees pain as a personal challenge and a chance to change himself. He focuses his energy on dealing with problems with resilience and keeping a calm and positive attitude by choosing not to show his pain to others. The renowned stoic philosopher Seneca said, Fire tests gold, and misfortune tests brave men. This profound statement encapsulates the Stoic belief that difficulties and challenges, represented by the fire metaphor, are chances for people to show their true character and resilience. With courage and fortitude, the silent man faces this test. In the end, a Stoic man's way of dealing with pain is a balanced mix of endurance, joy, and growth. He lives up to the stoic ideals of inner strength and calm by facing challenges with resilience, keeping a positive attitude, and seeing pain as a chance for growth. Through this way of thinking, the stoic man rises above pain and handles life's ups and downs with ease and a strong desire to grow as a person. His pleasures. In the intellectual world of stoicism, the way to enjoy pleasure is marked by a clear call for balance and temperance. This point of view is especially important when talking about how a silent guy interacts and dates women. Stoicism offers a complex view of pleasure, seeing it as a potential source of excess and addiction if not treated with care and control. Stoicism places a stress on virtue and self-mastery, the Stoic man thinks that pleasure is not necessarily bad, but the way we relate to pleasure that needs careful thought. He knows that letting joys control or corrupt him would go against the Stoic principles of being logical and self-disciplined. That's why he enjoys his pleasures with a sense of balance and reason. The Stoic man likes pleasures, but he is always aware that they are temporary and could take his attention away from more important things. This way of thinking about happiness isn't about giving up things or being ascetic. It's about finding a healthy and careful way to enjoy life. The stoic man avoids extravagance and indulgence by being careful and controlling his desire for pleasure. 
In this way, he makes sure that his pleasures don't take over his life, but instead stay as things he can enjoy without giving up his values or health. People think that wanting and craving joys leads to unhappiness and trouble. Thus, the stoic man develops a mindset that doesn't care about joys. His wants don't get in the way of his good judgment or lead him away from his path of virtue. His approach to pleasure is detached. He enjoys them in the present, but doesn't hold on to them or let them define his happiness. The stoic man is freed from the control of his wants by this attitude of non-attachment. He can find happiness and satisfaction within himself instead of looking for approval or pleasure from other people. The stoic man's connection with pleasure is also marked by his dedication to better ideas and values. He knows that living a life in line with one's values and beliefs is the only way to find true satisfaction and happiness, not chasing short-term joys. Therefore, pleasures are not ends in themselves. They are means to an end, chances to make life more enjoyable and rich without putting one's ethics or health at risk. The stoic man uses reason and wisdom to direct his actions and choices as he pursues pleasure while remaining true to his commitment to virtue. This way of looking at happiness is summed up by the stoic idea of eudaimonia, which means flourishing and stresses living a good, useful life. A stoic person doesn't look for pleasure as a short-term luxury. Instead, they see it as a healthy part of a well-lived life that is based on virtue and reason. To sum up, a stoic man's approach to happiness is a careful balance of enjoying things and not overdoing it, based on virtue and reason. By practicing non-attachment and self-control in his search for pleasure, he finds happiness and satisfaction within himself and lives a life that is full of meaning and in line with his beliefs and values. He has accomplished a lot. The Stoic theory of successes is based on a deep understanding of how temporary praise and admiration from others are. This way of thinking has a big effect on how a silent man thinks about and talks about his accomplishments, especially when it comes to his interactions with women. Stoicism teaches that living a life of virtue and inner peace is the key to finding true happiness and satisfaction, not seeking approval from others or financial success. Like this, the reserved man doesn't try to brag or show off his accomplishments because he knows that such displays are temporary and ultimately pointless. He instead looks at his successes with respect and thankfulness, seeing them as chances to improve himself and help others. With a sense of distance and perspective, the calm man deals with accomplishments. He is proud of what he has done, but he doesn't let it define who he is or what he is worth. Keeping a straight head about his outward accomplishments is easy for him because he knows they are subject to luck and chance. This sense of distance lets the stoic man approach his goals with calmness, not getting too excited about success or down when things don't go as planned. Stoicism teaches that the only way to really be successful is to work on developing inner traits like justice, courage and wisdom not getting praise from other people. So, the calm man works on improving these traits instead of going after short-lived benefits from outside sources. His happiness doesn't come from other people's approval. It comes from living a purposeful, honest life. The calm man's approach to success is also marked by a concern for others and care. He knows that his skills and talents are gifts that should be used to make the world a better place, not to get ahead in life. Because of this, he wants to use his success for good, whether it's through acts of kindness, mentoring or making art. The calm man finds more meaning and satisfaction in his work by using his skills to help others. To sum up, the stoic man's method to success is based on care, respect and distance. He stays calm about his success and focuses on his inner ideals instead of praise from others. 
living a purposeful and honest life brings him true satisfaction and happiness. The calm man's actions and example encourage others to follow their own roots of virtue and care, making the world a better place for everyone. Begin at once to live, Seneca once said, and each day should be seen as a different life. Each day is a life in and of itself, as Seneca tells us. And as one day comes to an end, we are given a chance to end its story with kindness and reflection. Now is the time to look at seven Stoic habit lessons that can help us end the day with mindfulness and get ready for the gift of a new day. Remember that every lesson is valuable, but the most important thing is to find the ones that speak to you. You can add them to your evening routine however you like, making them fit your trip. Lesson 1. Thinking about what you did during the day. This isn't just a brain workout, it's a practice that changes you. This is an old stoic practice that combines reflection and goal setting. It helps us connect who we are today with who we want to be tomorrow. Each day brings us a huge number of options and each one paints a different picture of our lives. Reflection is more than just going over the decisions we made. It's putting ourselves in the shoes of an onlooker and trying to figure out why we did what we did and how it affected other people. Think about a simple exchange, like talking to a co-worker. This exchange can be broken down through the lens of reflection. Were your words based on real interest or a sense of duty? Did you listen to understand or just to answer when they spoke? This level of detail in self-evaluation can show us deeply ingrained patterns of behavior, some of which we may not even be aware of. Now let's look at events that are more important. You might have had to make a tough choice at work or get into a fight at home. When you think about these kinds of situations, you can tell if your reaction came from ego, feeling or calmness. Did you want to be liked? or did you really care about what was best for everyone? You can find your strengths and vices through thought, but it's also a way to learn more about yourself. Learning about our actions helps us understand the fears, wants, biases, and beliefs that affect the decisions we make. For example, if you noticed yourself avoiding a certain job, was it because you were really worried about it or because you were afraid to fail? when you replied fiercely in a fight? Was it because of the issue at hand or something that happened to you in the past? Adding this practice to our nighttime routine has very important effects. It helps us understand ourselves better and gives us a plan for how to grow as people every day. We stop being unconscious receivers of outside forces and start shaping our own personalities. Lesson 2. Get ready for the problems that will come up tomorrow. This isn't about predicting every problem that might come up or being afraid of the unknown. Anchoring yourself in stoic resilience, on the other hand, is about mentally preparing yourself to handle whatever comes your way. The Stoics taught us about the idea of premeditatio malorum, which means planning for bad things to happen. You imagine problems that might come up, this isn't meant to make you more anxious, but to lessen the shock of problems and prepare your mind for how to deal with them. As Seneca said, what is quite unlooked for is more crushing in its effect, and unexpectedness adds to the weight of a disaster. If we prepare our minds ahead of time, we'll be less likely to be upset when we face problems. Take a look at your day ahead. You might have to make a tough choice, give a tough talk, or have a tough chat coming up. Take a moment the night before to think about these situations and walk through them in your mind. Picture not only what will happen, but also how you will feel and what you might say in response. Think about the worst things that could happen, but more importantly, picture how you would handle them with ease, grace, and stoic calm. For example, if you're worried about an argument at a meeting, don't think about the disagreement itself. Instead, think about how you will handle it. If you want to keep the talk on track and avoid getting emotional, what can you do to stay grounded? By picturing yourself being cool and giving thoughtful answers, 
you're practicing in your mind, which will help you when the real problem comes up. This is also a good time to think about the stoic idea that we can control our responses, even if we can't control what happens. Remind yourself of the stoic principle when you're facing a potential setback, such as a project delay or an unexpected obstacle. It's not events that upset us, but our judgment about them. This will help you prepare your mind to view setbacks not as failures, but as chances to learn and grow. By making this mental planning a nightly habit, you're shaping your reactions ahead of time, making sure that even when bad things happen, you stay strong, calm, and grounded in stoic wisdom. It's more important to make sure you have the mental fortitude and flexibility to handle whatever comes your way when preparing for tomorrow's tasks than to predict every turn of the road. Third lesson, show your appreciation. It's getting close to night and the world is starting to get quiet. Our stoic journey leads us to one of the deepest feelings people can have. Thanks. Practicing gratitude is more than just being thankful. It's a way of thinking about the world and our place in it. You see, gratitude is like a lantern in the big seas of life, where storms of unhappiness and waves of desire are always trying to knock us off course. This light of gratitude guides us. It's a direction that points us toward happiness and tells us to find beauty, simplicity and wealth in things that aren't made of matter. The Stoic Emperor Marcus Aurelius would often start his day with a simple question, what am I thankful for today? This simple act of gratitude was a source of stability for a man of great power and honor. As the day came to a close in the evening, he thought back on how thankful he was for all the little and big things that happened. Think about how important this practice is in our busy daily lives. It's simple to focus on what we don't have, what went wrong, or what could be better. Still, every day has many gifts, like the sound of birds singing in the morning, the smell of freshly made coffee, the contagious laughter of a loved one, or just breathing and being alive. As you sit in quiet thought every night, in the middle of life's big show, push yourself to see beyond the obvious. Dive deeper into the experiences you already have. Did you notice how the light and shadows play on the walls at sunset? What about the beat of your heart, which is like a constant melody of life? Maybe an old friend sent you a message out of the blue, or you found a song that spoke to your soul. Adding this broad view of thanks to your daily routine changes not only how you see things, but also how you live your life. You are no longer a spectator in the play of life. You are now a seeker, looking for times of wonder, joy, and gratitude. This better view becomes a part of who you are as the days turn into weeks and weeks into months. The world around you changes. Problems that used to be scary hills turn into exciting hikes, and mistakes that used to be a burden turn into lessons filled with wisdom. Life, in all its unpredictable glory, turns into a dance of endless moments that deserve your thanks. Therefore, when you go to sleep each night, let your heart be full of gratitude and the many small and big joys that the day brought you. Stoicism says that being grateful is more than just an action. It's an art that fills our lives with colors of happiness, wonder, and never-ending appreciation. Fourth lesson, read works by Stoics. For hundreds of years, people who want to gain wisdom have done something every night while the moon shines. They read Stoic books. This isn't just a habit. It's a way of life that brings you together with some of the brightest minds who have ever lived. Stoic writing is more than just words on a page. It holds the deepest secrets of life. Thinkers like Seneca, Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus wrote these works, which contain the core of what people have experienced and learned. Reading them every night is like having an intellectual conversation where one text at a time, timeless wisdom is shared. Say you are sitting next to a warm stove and Seneca is talking to you about life and time. Life, if you know how to use it, 
is long, he might tell you. How often do we complain about not having enough time when, in reality, it's our bad time management or lack of awareness that's getting in the way? When we think about these kinds of ideas at night, they can change how we act and think in the days to come. Or maybe you'd find Marcus Aurelius's private thoughts in his meditations. It's like reading the personal record of a Roman emperor who, despite his great power, struggled with the same human problems we all do. You might read one night, the best way to get back at someone is to not be like them. In a world where being mean and petty is common, this is a strong lesson to keep our honor and dignity. When you open these books at night, it's like walking into a grand, endless hall where stoic thinkers are waiting to share their ideas, question your beliefs, and comfort you. It's a lively, interesting talk that goes back thousands of years. Reading stoic theory, on the other hand, is more than just mindless consumption. It makes you think. It's a challenge to think about these ideas, question them, and shape them to fit the puzzle of your own life. Epictetus's ideas on control may hit you hard one night, reminding you to tell the difference between what you can control and what you can't. Or, on a really bad day, you might find comfort in the stoic idea of amor fati, which means love of one's fate. You are shaping your soul, improving your character, and getting yourself ready to face life's many challenges with grace, balance, and wisdom when you make reading stoic works a bedtime routine. Over time, these daily trips into stoicism change you. You are no longer moved by the storms of life. Instead, you stand tall, rooted in old wisdom, ready to use every challenge as a chance to learn and grow. Reading stoic books at night isn't just a brushstroke in the big picture of daily life. It's the colors that make the whole picture come to life. The fifth lesson is to disconnect in order to reunite. In this time of constant alerts, never-ending streams of content, and the digital hum that supports modern life, there is a deep and timely call to action from the Stoics, purposefully disconnecting in order to truly rejoin. We have more ways to connect with each other and the world at our hands than ever before. Still, a real sense of connection seems hard to find for many people in the middle of all the emails and news. A lot of the time, we lose touch with the quiet, thoughtful part of ourselves that makes us who we are. Even though they didn't have computers or social media, the Stoics knew how important it was to be alone and think about things. They knew that real understanding doesn't come from being involved all the time, but from taking intentional breaks. The times when we don't do anything are often when we have the deepest thoughts. Picture a calm lake with still water. Every day's distractions are like throwing a stone into this calm lake, making waves and shaking it up. If we've thrown too many stones by evening, the water gets rough, just like our minds are when we're thinking too much. Cutting yourself off is like giving this lake a chance to get back to its calm state. Now, this isn't a call for total separation or not using technology at all. Instead, it's about choosing to not be involved. It could be turning off your phone an hour before bed to get rid of the noise and make room for quiet thought. There may be a few times when you look out the window and see the world without the filters and images that make it look different. As you focus on this act of disconnecting, you start a deeper, more meaningful journey of reuniting with yourself, your thoughts and feelings, the beat of your breath, and the simple joy of being alive. Remember the good old days when seeing a bright screen didn't make you happy. Instead, a good book, the soft playing of a guitar, or a deep talk with a loved one did. The Stoics believed in this way of getting back in touch. In his writings, Seneca praised the values of silence and self-reflection. Marcus Aurelius frequently discussed withdrawing into oneself. They understood that when we block out outside distractions, we can connect with our inner world. When you choose to unplug every night, you're not just taking a break from technology, 
you're starting a holy trip back to yourself. It's a journey where every step away from the noise brings you closer to your center, a place of pure joy, peace, and wisdom. If you make this a regular part of your evening routine, you'll find that the deepest link of all is with your soul. You start to realize that you're not just a drop in the huge ocean of digital information, you're the ocean itself. And when you realize this, you find freedom, clarity, and an endless source of joy. Sixth lesson, let go of things you can't control. The world goes dark at night, bringing with it a world of stars and dreams. There's a gentle call for all of us, one that the Stoics strongly supported, to let go of things, events, and results that are out of our control. The most important part of Stoic thought is a deep knowledge of control, or knowing what we can and cannot do. Because life is so unpredictable, it throws us a lot of different situations, some of which we can change, and some of which we can't. Not being able to control some things is like catching the wind in a net. It doesn't work and is very upsetting. Think about how powerful the universe is, how big and how many galaxies there are, how stars are born and die, and how galaxies spin in their cosmic dance. In the meantime, here we are on our tiny blue dot, often feeling swamped by things big and small. We can't always choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them, Epictetus once said in a beautiful way. This wisdom leads to inner peace. Imagine holding on to a balloon that stands for your worries, fears, and the results you wish you could control. It pulls against you more when you grip it tighter. What if you could just let it go? Watch as the winds of acceptance and understanding carry it away. It will rise higher and higher until it's just a dot in the vast sky of existence. That's an important part of letting go. As you wind down every night, you have a chance to think about and feel about what happened during the day, figuring out what you could have done better and what you couldn't. It could be how an important meeting turned out how a friend reacted to something you said, or how the world is always changing. When you recognize and let go of these things, you give yourself peace of mind and the freedom to focus on things you can really change. This act of letting go every night is healing. It's like taking weight off your soul, letting it be free and light. Over time, this practice changes from something that is done every night to a way of life. You are no longer affected by every change in the outside world. Instead, you become the calm heart of the storm, in tune with everything, even if chaos is going on outside. Marcus Aurelius wrote a lot about how things change and how temporary our place in the world is. His words are a powerful warning of how pointless it is to hold on to things that are beyond us. When we believe this, Nights aren't just a time for our bodies to rest. They're also a safe place for our souls to recognize, accept, and let go. By making this a regular part of your evening routine, you'll wake up in the morning with more energy, focus, and an unwavering peace, knowing that you're in sync with nature and can act where you can and let go where you can. This balance is the very best example of stoic peace and wisdom. Seventh lesson, plan what you want to do the next day. As the silk curtain of night falls, a world of possibilities opens up, making way for a new day. They thought that setting goals was the best way to really use the power of a new day. It's not enough to just have plans. Goals are also more than just jobs. They're the North Star of our deepest hopes and dreams. In today's world, people are always trying to reach their goals and show what they've accomplished. But the Stoic view invites us to a deeper, more meaningful right. It's not just about crossing things off a list or rushing through them. It's about being rooted in our core values, making sure our actions are in line with our beliefs and starting each day with a clear sense of what you want to achieve. Imagine a ship that sets sail without a plan, 
the wind and tides would decide where it goes. It could drift aimlessly or even crash into lands it wasn't meant to hit. Setting goals for ourselves is like plotting a ship's path to make sure it gets to where it needs to go. There's a chance to ask yourself every night, what virtue do I wish to embody? What values do I want to manifest through my actions? Maybe it's the stoic ideal of courage, meeting a tough situation head on. Deciding to listen more and speak less during a heated argument might be a sign of wisdom. Or it could be justice, making sure that the important choice you have to make is fair. Planning every minute and exchange isn't the point. The point is to develop an attitude, a set of beliefs that will guide you throughout the day. Through making goals based on stoic ideas, we give our deeds purpose and meaning. Each job turns into more than just an action. It shows what we believe in. Seneca once said, if one does not know to which port one is sailing, no wind is favorable. When you set goals, you choose your port and turn every breeze, challenge and joy into a favorable wind that moves you forward. This habit changes not only our days and nights, but our whole lives over time. No longer do we feel lost in the vast seas of existence. We become expert navigators who steer our ship with unwavering determination, even through life's worst storms. As we listen to the whispers of old Stoic wisdom, we realize that their lessons are not just ideas to think about, but also steps that can be taken. Every night, when everything around us quiets down and we're about to rest and start over, we hold the keys to a life with more meaning, purpose and inner peace. But, as with any great theory, Stoicism isn't just about knowing. It's also about putting what you learn into practice. It grows best when we follow its lessons in every part of our daily lives. There's no better time than the end of the day to do this, when we can think, change and get ready for the next day. What about these daily Stoic habits struck a chord with you the most? In what ways do you see yourself working these into your evening routine? In the comments below, tell us about your Stoic journey, your thoughts and your hopes. Together, let's walk this path of wisdom and learn from each other. As we draw this journey to a close, it's my hope that the seeds of Stoic wisdom planted within these pages have begun to take root in your heart and mind. Stoicism is not just a philosophy to be studied, it is a way of life to be lived, a path to walk each day with intention and courage. Reflect on the changes, however small, that you've observed in your approach to life's challenges. Have you noticed a newfound resilience in the face of adversity, or perhaps a sense of calm amidst the storm? These are the markers of your growth the signs that you are moving towards a life of true success and fulfillment. But the journey doesn't end here. The road to self-improvement is endless, and every day presents a new opportunity to practice virtue, to choose happiness, and to live in harmony with the world around us. I invite you now to share your thoughts and reflections. How has this guide touched your life? What insights have resonated with you the most? Your journey is uniquely yours, but in sharing it, we create a community of like-minded souls walking together towards the light of wisdom and peace. Comment below with your experiences, your challenges, and your victories. Let's continue this conversation and support each other in our quest for a successful life as defined by the profound simplicity of Stoic principles. Together, we forge a path forward, guided by the stars of our own making.